All right, I'll call this meeting to order for February the 19th, 2019. Welcome, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the February 19th, 2019 regular meeting of council be received. Motion to move to um, uh, Council Tony, seconded by uh, Councilor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Result that the minutes of the February 5th, 2019 Council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Antoni. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> All right, for um, receptions and delegations, uh, we'll. Uh, uh, be resolved that the public hearing for bylaw 2 2019 be called to order 7 31 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so we all see here uh, the uh, public notice that went out in regards to the. Special service proposal. We don't have anybody here to make any presentation for or against. Any discussion of council? Councilor Delorier. Not on the uh, topic of the hearing, but on how you open here. Isn't there a preamble you're supposed to do a back and forth for a hearing? Uh, that all section such and such has been adhered to? That's a zoning. Oh, that's just for zoning? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure we're legit. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? And I, I just wanted to comment just for the public. Uh, I've had some people ask me that they thought that this is something new and this is a, a, a separate bill that they didn't you know, see before. But uh, of course, this is something that's not new and it's been ongoing as we update it each year. And so it will be uh, presented to them on their, on their tax notes. <laughs> Resolved that public hearing bylaw 2, 2019 closed. Moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Moving on, we have uh, close and early learning. Yeah, there's people yeah. there. Oh, just to end the public hearing piece, when did we decide to have a public hearing today? I don't remember talking about this today. This would have been done. There's some, I think it's a minimum required notice that administration would have put out. No, but, but it says council. I'm just asking when we did it. I don't remember ever hearing it before. I remember getting the notice in the mail. Unfortunately, we didn't know that you, you folks were out there. So um, on 4.1, that was a special service proposal bylaw, 2002-2019. If any of you, have, I'll go back to the, the public hearing just to uh, hear if anybody had any presentation on that. So if anybody in the crowd here today has any presentation on that, I'll let you come forward to make a presentation. This is on the special services. Can't hear you. <clears throat> on the special services? Yes. Did you have a presentation on that? I wanted to. Okay, you can come forward. <coughs> Where do you want me to be? Right here. Right in front of you. You bet. Okay. State your name and set an address, please. Okay. All right, I'm uh, Don Brown. I have a house on 216 2nd Avenue South. Okay, thank you. 
And my uh, <coughs> issue is with the type of taxation. And I would be in favor of putting recycling and garbage on the mill rate instead of by parcel. Uh, I guess I'll carry on. And I guess you don't want to know my reasons why. Well, I just think about the old age pensioners living on old age pension security. They're living pretty tight. And you know what? Uh, <coughs> most likely, they gave everything they had to uh, educate their children uh, so they could, you know, get a decent job. They maybe not had the opportunities we've had. I think we've been very fortunate. Uh, now this generation needs to uh, help out. Most have had a good paying job and many in the town on the public payroll and good pensions and they were fought for and they deserve them. A mill rate increase is much more fair taxation. Together we can make this town a good place to live and we all can have the benefits of a community. If we need equipment to do the job of providing services to the public, I for one would be willing to pay more tax. To do otherwise is the road to poor town and division of the town. Anyway, that's my take on it. And I know you've got the end of your job of uh, wasting money and stuff. That's okay. Do you have any comments from Council Rome? <clears throat> you just told us that it wasn't going to be an increase. It was the same as it always has been? There is a slight increase. A slight increase. Two and a half percent. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Don. Go ahead, Councillor Gray. Don? Don? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Did I walk away on you? <laughs> I did. Yeah, we... Like, We've talked about this a number of times, so I, I, I just wanted to, because I don't think your your uh, message was clear. Um, it's not the increase or not increase that you're objecting to. No, it's, no, the it's the process of charging flat fees per residence as opposed to charging everything based on the mill rate the way it was previously. That's right. And. Your objection is primarily based on the fact that there are persons who are less capable of paying for it? Absolutely. Okay. And, and is that because you think that people with less income will necessarily live in less expensive housing? I just think that uh, people that are living on there, the increase is much more pronounced than a somebody that has a good wage, good pension, and has better means to handle it. I can't remember the history lesson, but way back when the country was being built, I don't know if it was the Catholic Church, they assessed them all a fee. Some of them didn't have anything to pay it with, so they had to leave. So, you know, the mill rate was figured out to be the fairest way to tax. Nobody likes to pay tax, but if you're getting value for tax, there's no problem because when you go down to the gas pump, you pay it. Do you see a distinction between those things which are inherently services, the delivery of water, picking up garbage, and those things which are the general responsibility of the population? the education of children, providing police protection or fire protection. Do you see a distinction between those? No, I don't. They're all, we, we need them in the town because if you don't do that, you're going to have part of the town over here. Pretty soon I don't want to go and work for them because they don't pay their share. We're all in this together. And it's, it's, it's the same as uh, buying out of town. I'm at, I, I, we need to support ourselves. Well, I agree with that. I, I'm just having trouble with the analogy 
Uh, you're not suggesting the town employees are picking and choosing which areas they go no. to? No. Those are the only questions I have. Okay. Any further? Councilor White. Just a, a comment. Thank you for being concerned about other people because we don't have that concern, which I, I know we do here. And these people do here, obviously, also. I appreciate that so much. Well, I, I thank you, but uh, we need to take, as people, take more interest in it and say, oh, it doesn't bother me, we'll just go along. Uh, I think everybody needs to be educated on what's going on. I don't know what you guys do because I can't. Uh, all right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. <coughs> All right, we already closed the hearing, so I'll move on to 4.3. Oh, oh, sorry, do you have one as well? Okay, sorry. State your name and civic address, please. Karina Medved, I live at 708 2nd Street North. So I concur with what that wonderful gentleman said, so to speed things up, it will just put me on the same page. But I have a question. The letter that was sent out said that you're looking to pull the fees from the general mill rate. So does that mean it's going to show up on the property tax bill clearly identified as another fee? Yes? Great. Then does that mean if that were to proceed as you proposed that the general mill rate would then be reduced for a single family home by $151.50? Councilor I guess. And I think there was a lot of confusion out in the community on this. Last year, the same fee applied. It's applied for about the last four or five years. Last year was about $146, so it's only going up by about $6. It's so going up by $366. I did the math on <coughs> the single family home. Yeah. However, if you do not reduce the general mill rate, but put an additional fee for garbage and recycling, that means it's actually going up by $151.50. Right. So. The, the reduction you'll see if you look back, I think it was in the 2015 tax year, you see the big drop in taxes on up the general mill rate, that was due to this bylaw. Okay. But again, if the general mill rate, where you're currently putting those fees in, is we're, not reduced. We're not currently putting those fees in on the general mill rate. They were put in on the special services bylaw that was passed two years ago. This is about the fourth year of the special services bylaw. Okay, so so they, they've been pulled out of the general mill rate for about four years now. Okay, so then you're not putting them currently in the general mill rate. So the increase would literally be just the 366. Okay, so that covers that one. Councilor Gray, if you got a question. I, I just want to be, to be clear. You know that this is an existing fee on your taxes from the last several years. Yes. This, the, the, that the reduction was when they first when, when well see I wasn't council. living here or owning a home right. at that time so that's why I wanted some clarification on that the, so the I don't have that history because in the letter that came out it didn't say we needed to go back that many years or I would have the, the revenues from the general mill rate mm -hmm. are not used for well actually it's not true about six percent are used for um, subsidizing the mm -hmm. garbage so um, there's there's some extra the intention over time when they passed the bylaw in the last council was to uh, eventually have garbage and water if we ever do an, an application with public utilities for it um, water and, and and garbage paying for themselves as an independent assessment okay just want to make sure you do that thank you and I'm not sure if this is the place to bring this up, but I figure since we're talking garbage and recycling, is it a requirement for this t in this town to have a garbage can with a lid in order to have the service? For pickup, you mean? Yes. Yes. Okay, then I have an issue. Because when my garbage gets picked up, the garbage man does not put the lid on properly. So on a windy day, if it wasn't for the lovely neighbors I have, I'd be going out and buying a new garbage can because my lid is blown away three blocks down and I no longer have a garbage can lid. So is there something we can do about making sure that when the garbage is being collected, that the staff is doing their due diligence to make sure lids are put on? So uh, I'll just remind you just to stick to the, the items on the, <coughs> well, that's the why hearing. I was but you can bring that forth to 
uh, Mr. Poole. Okay, so that is a different that. Okay. Then I'll just jump to the recycling because spilled garbage is the other one, but I'm presuming it'll go in the same spot. So recycling. I'm in area one. I'm a Monday pickup. Recycling currently operates by the day of the week. It doesn't change like the garbage collection. In the 2018 year, there were six months where recycling fell on the week of a long weekend, which means I only got recycling pickup once a month for six months. So, are you guys going to be prorating the recycling fee portion of this for those of us who don't get the collection 24 times a year but only get it 18? Because this month is a lovely example because pickup was the fourth. We had a snowstorm. Trucks weren't out. I understand that, but I still didn't get my pickup. Pickup was supposed to be yesterday. I didn't get my pickup because it was a long weekend. I'm now trying to hold on to over a month's worth of recycling. It's going to be six weeks <coughs> for my next pickup. So if the program is to encourage recycling so we're not putting that into the landfill, it's just become a huge deterrent for not only me but many people in Area 1. And, and recycling right now, just to tell you that it's, it is I read the article. right now, and we, we do have some <laughs> some issues that we're dealing with with yeah. the, the lines, not to throw them under the bus, but definitely there are some issues there that we're dealing with. Uh, I did read the article in Star and Times, so it was something I wanted, one, I'd like to see it fixed, because either we need to change the days like the garbage so that everybody gets fair, equal pickup because six times in the year, and I'm getting taxed the same as everybody else, but I'm not getting the same pickup service. So in all honesty, why should I be paying the same fee for something I'm not getting? So it's either working it out so it changes like the garbage pickup or do, you know, maybe working a little harder on those particular we're, weeks. We're, the committee right now is, is reviewing it and trying to come up with a solution <laughs> to that, so uh, that will be coming in. in because in Area also. 1 is Come always the one Area that one suffers. Area 1, lots of complaints, <laughs> so they feel your pain. So is that on the transportation right. committee's agenda to deal yeah, with that equity? That's right, yes. Then we'll leave it for them to yeah. provide a report. Exactly. So, is there anything further then? No, those were the two I wanted to bring up with this recycling and this garbage, because if I'm paying those fees, I want the service. Thank you very much. Councilor Morial. So just as chair of the, the transportation committee that deals with the recycling stuff, uh, just like you probably saw in the paper that there was a request for proposals for recycling collection to yes. address, and part of that RFP um, uh, what the committee is looking at is to uh, deal with and solve and address all those issues that you just Okay, mentioned. as long as that's on the list, then I'm it, happy. It's right up on the top to deal with that. So Excellent. That's the reason why we have the RFP out. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. And thank you for your other email today. <laughs> all right, anything further? Oh, okay. anybody else? All right. I'm good. Thank right. you. Anybody else would like to make a proposal or submit uh, according to the changes to the hearing or the bylaw. Okay, so then we'll move on. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Could I uh, ask you a question? Come ahead then. Yeah. I should have asked you this before because I want you to tell me <coughs> why you go this route of the fee instead of the mill rate. What, what's the <coughs> reasons for doing it that way? I guess the one of the reasons was we, we got a lot of uh, asks from the community as far as we're all getting the same service. Why am I paying five times as much for the exact same service as my neighbor across the street? So that. So what else are you going to take that argument to? I don't have any kids going to school. I don't want to pay school tax. We're all in this community together. For right now, we've only taken it to this because this this is a defined service. Everybody gets two cans. Yeah. Whereas educating kids, even if you don't have kids, you still benefit benefit from an educated population. Absolutely. So, but I mean, but two cans of garbage. Everybody gets two cans of garbage. Here, no, that is March seventh. Okay. 
Councillor Gray. The hearing on education is March 7th, so I have nothing to do with that. Well, I know, but it's the, it's the attitude that, oh, well, he's getting two garbage cans, I'm getting two. But this poor sucker over here, he's hardly making ends meet with his pension. So, you know, just, we, we're the generation that's been very fortunate to look back to our parents. They gave everything so we could get an education. Mr. Brown. You, know, you know what? Probably your cell phone's uh, bill is bigger than what you're going to get on this water rate increase. Mr. Brown? Anyway. Just, just, just so that I'm clear, um, would you be in favor of us dropping the charge for water and sewer and adding that to the mill rate at the same time? Why not? I mean, I'm just, I'm not advocating one way. I'm just asking if that's what you are proposing. Well, uh, I would do that too because we're in the town and we're in a community. And when you start uh, picking and choosing, then we become very unequal in this community. So if one person decided to water the lawn and use three times as much water as the next person. Yeah, but you still got a, a base amount, <coughs> right? I'm not saying you're gonna have five garbage cans full or 10. You give the same service. Okay. And the same with the water you use by how much you're using. No problem with that at all. Okay. Anyway, I just want to know why you went to the sir the fee instead of the mill rate. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you. you. Can I go? You may. Okay. <laughs> Any further presentation? Okay. Moving on to our next delegation, we have the Bozeman Early Learning Center, Brittany Faluk and company. Welcome, welcome to the council. Thank you. Did and, you get uh, some paperwork from us already? We uh, have in, in our uh, minutes here, yes. I did bring some along. Yeah. I'm Brittany. I'm Amanda. I'm Caitlin. And we're here on behalf of the Bozeman Early Learning Center. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some information about us in the Star and Times lately. We've been having great success um, with starting up our daycare. Construction is mm -hmm. currently underway. Um, we've had the school division step in and do the construction on behalf of us at the school. Uh, our original quote was almost $400,000 to renovate the two classrooms in the school. By having the school division do the project, we're hoping that the project should be around $300,000 to $320,000, of course, if nothing else goes wrong. Um, and so our portion, I don't know if you remember <coughs> our previous presentation, we it's a 60-40 split with the government. And so our portion, instead of like 160, is more like the $120,000 mark. <coughs> We have received multiple donations, which are listed below, um, and we've been quite successful and are almost at the technical 40% uh, amount required to open the daycare if absolutely nothing goes wrong with construction and we have no increased costs. However, we have zero dollars to put anything in the daycare. Um, the construction of the daycare is basically the walls, the floor, the kitchen cupboards required, and that's it. We <coughs> need a fridge, a stove, a commercial dishwasher, a triple sink, uh, and then, of course, your cribs and playpens and toys and everything else. So we're here asking to receive $7,000 towards the purchase of the fridge and the stove and the commercial dishwasher for the daycare. Two ladies, nothing to add. Okay, questions from Council. Council White. Uh, one is a wonderful project. Thank you so much for your energy in trying to making this happen. Can't speak for Council, of course. How does this help the Thomas Long River? I think I have some ideas, but you probably have many more. Well, uh, for starters, um, 
Once we open, we are 100% uh, covered in our operating budget, so we will be self-sufficient, and that'll bring three new jobs to Bozeman um, that there wasn't before. So those three people that are working, of course, will spend all their money at Swan River because there's nowhere to buy anything in Bozeman. Um, and then the daycare in Swan River that don't have enough space, the kids will still be able to attend in Bozeman should help the school in Bozeman, which will in turn help the school in Swan River because there's kids that can't attend in Bozeman because there's no child care. So the schools in Swan River are too full. Um, so you should be able to get more one-on-one -on -one care. And then also that there will actually be enough spaces so that some more people can go back to work. Can you see it helping recruit people of all professions? to move to our community because they have daycare now or <coughs> potentially. Absolutely. If they didn't have daycare, they may not come to Swan Valley Absolutely. and may or may not locate in Swan River. Right. Like okay. my sister-in-law currently has a little girl in the big daycare in Swan River and she, her child is in there in the infant space um, and she turns two in March and there's no space for her to continue to attend the daycare. So she has to either stop working or find a different spot for her child to attend just based on numbers at the exact time there's there's only a certain numbers of children can attend at certain ages and <coughs> she can no longer attend the daycare they said we another option Council awesome, Royal um, firstly commend you guys on the project I don't envy you on that project it's like very well done um, but I'm just a bit of insight here and stuff like that I see like you have a seven thousand dollar request um, how do you propose we address uh, going forward by if we set this precedent um, from when other daycares or entities come forward with similar requests? How do you propose us to deal with that? Because this would set a precedent and open the floodgates for other organizations to come to council to purchase these where we're already on a tax. Um, um, funds are tight and things like and all that. So like. Um, if this is granted, um, I can guarantee almost that there are other daycares that are going to be coming to the town council for similar requests. Right. How do you propose we address that? Like, how do we pick and choose and decide where we're allocating dollars while trying to maintain tax rates at a reasonable level? I have no idea. I mean, I guess. The oftentimes Swan Valley West and, and Minnetonis and Mountain have to help in projects that happen in Swan River. So I don't know if this is one of those, um, I don't know how you word it, but you help them a little bit so that they continue to help you in your further endeavors. Like Swan Valley West has already given us money, Minnetonis, Bozeman has already given us money. Um, this is maybe just a show of faith that says we're all in it together. Any further question? <clears throat> okay, council, there will be something that council will have to okay. talk about, but uh, we thank you for your time, and uh, we'll be getting back to you. Perfect. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming out. <coughs> okay, <coughs> moving on, 4.4, homeless shelter presentation, David Goldie. Good evening, David. an idea for a soup kitchen homeless shelter here in Swan River. Uh, we've been working with uh, uh, less fortunate here in this community for the past two years. Um, I know that we're not the only people that see that there is a need <coughs> for some sort of help for these people. Uh, See, we, we just want to offer um, hope for those who are in a hopeless situation, uh, lessen criminal activity, educate them on uh, living skills, better the quality of their lives, 
and others, others' lives around in this community. Uh, we want to lessen the gap uh, by creating uh, social status equality. Uh, we want to create awareness and understanding on how to properly handle and deal uh, with those in our community who are less fortunate. And we will um, probably be the first fully functional, non-biased recovery transition house that works. Uh, no book knowledge is required. Um, basically, uh, it's hands-on. It's a hands-on approach with these people uh, because uh, you have somebody in the midst, in the mix with you that has come out of this situation from a big city and knows um, what it takes to handle these kind of people and what we need to go forward with, uh, with what I'm proposing that we should do in order to handle our situation in this town. And we do have a situation um, with all the complaining about crime and people's uh, uh, homes being broken into and businesses being broken into. We got to do something. And I, I know that I do have the answer. I need some trust from my friends and my community. And I do have answers. I do have answers because, like I said, I've been there. And I know what it takes. I know what it takes. So what I'm asking is um, for an operation cost of, uh, to purchase a building, $75,000. It's, um, you know, it's already there, it's made. It just needs to be purchased. You don't have to build it. There's no, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar fee here for, for a building. Uh, there's also going to be maybe a little bit of a, a cost for renovation for the building because it would require a commercial kitchen and also um, it would um, have to be um, structured for um, housing and code. So, you know, that would cost probably another 200000 because we have companies in this town that are willing to give us free work. Come in and do the construction for us for free. No, no fees. Just they want to come in and donate and help get this project up and running. And so uh, <laughs> I don't know how much more I can say about this, but uh, I do have answers if you guys need them. And I do have a way that we can work together as a community and actually bring this town um, closer. We, we don't want a social status. We don't want those against us, us against them, middle class, higher class, lower class. <coughs> let's, let's try and, and create equality and, and work with these people. Work with people that are, that are struggling. I mean, it's easy when you're on the top, man. But when you're on the bottom, where do you go? But more down, more <laughs> lower and lower. I mean, we got to do something. David, any questions of council? Councillor White. Have you approached other entities to provide you funds? The well, G3, for example. Uh, right now, I I uh, I wanted to approach my town, the town, the the, the place where it's happening. Um, I don't really like this is my first crack at the can. I um, I'm not going to say I have all the answers. Uh, uh, you know, structurally with the government and and who to go ask for money. I don't know, but I'm trying to to uh, start where I know where to start. So, Councillor Friesen, I just have one question. <coughs> you mentioned here that there'd be a rental fee. Yes. Oh, yes. Where would these people? get $600 to pay you. Well, okay, no, not pay me. <coughs> no, not, pay. Okay, Sorry. to pay. Yeah. Okay. 
So this is another thing. This program would be fully, um, it would pay for itself. Um, the people that are mostly affected by what we're dealing with here are low class, low, like welfare recipients. So how they would get the money to pay for rent is through the Manitoba government. I mean, let's just face it, that's what we're dealing with. But it would be fully sustainable unto itself. It would, uh, you know what, I don't know if somebody would come alongside with me, teach me how to do the, the ins and outs of the financial bit, but we could have this fully sustainable and the town would be making money off of this. It would, it would, it would give back. That's the whole purpose of this, is to give back. So, um, I don't know if you guys know where BG's dental office used to be. On, I think it's 5th, 6th? Anyways, that's the building that I was inquiring about. I've been in contact with the owner, and she is willing to give me that building from $101,000 uh, she is willing to give it to me for 75000 because she really likes this idea. Um, I could probably, maybe, I'm not sure if I could get her any lower, but, um, yeah, this, we'd have to do a little bit of work in there. But like I said, we do have companies that have come forward and they're willing to donate work. <coughs> yes, sir. Good morning. I applaud you on your on your efforts here. I can tell your heart is totally in the right place. Um, have you have you spoken with any? But I, 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 I you've acknowledged <coughs> that there's probably a lot of fine details that still need to be worked out. And as far as even operational wise, have you spoken with any uh, any existing missions like Sloan Mission in Winnipeg or, or places like that that could offer you some sort of guidance in this process? Yes, I have. Two years ago, I did. Uh, all they said is take the bull by the horns and go. That was their advice to me. Uh, that's your community, not ours. So you're on your own there. But this is what I can tell you. Take the bull by the horns and go for it. Just put it out there and uh, ride. Hold on for eight seconds. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Councilor Mario. Um, once again, uh, totally support the project. I understand the concept and stuff like that. The three hundred thousand dollars—that's a lot of money. It is. Um, for for myself, for sure, um, it would be just like me going to the bank asking for money to set up a new business. Um, we need to see like a a completely detailed business plan of what you're looking at, what costs, our cost estimate, um, estimates from contractors, things like that, so that it firms up, so that it's not numbers pulled high from the sky. Okay. It's actual data that we can see. Um, unfortunately, for me, the days of a spit and a handshake of things going on, we, we need to see where, like, if this is a viable project. It's not my money to give away, it's the, the repairs of the town so on or his money. <coughs> we need to see the data through a business case, and I may have suggested that maybe you, you need to seek out someone that can help you write a business case, talk to the Salon missions and those organizations that do that to see what their hurdles are, what their challenges were, how they solved them, and how you can take those some of those models and bring it forward in part of the business case and then submit that to council where um, we can totally look at it and, and make an educated decision and have a, a good discussion on it. Like, I totally understand where you're coming from, I totally support it, I understand and agree 100% with what you're saying of what the needs are and stuff like that, but we need the, the business case, as far as I'm concerned, behind it mm -hmm. to uh, totally evaluate the, the project. So. Well, like I said, I, I did approach uh, Simone Mission and their, their answers were <coughs> hold fundraisers, get your town involved. Um, there is, like, like they said to me, there is no, there's no way of knowing uh, what you're getting into until you, until you guys do it. And, and if we could just, like, you guys keep on using Salome Mission as an example, well then, like, look at what Salome Mission is doing in, in Winnipeg. That could happen here. 
and and you know I think that we have a better opportunity to set people free from what they're dealing with out there uh, instead of having them rely on, on, on this, that it could be a gateway from poverty into living a lifestyle of work and, and uh, basically uh, responsibility. You know, like, uh, okay, you're saying 300,000 is a, is, is, is a long shot. But I'm saying that you take 100,000 from one infrastructure or 100,000 from another infrastructure, you got a starting block. Like you guys are sinking how much money into two infrastructures? Why can't you just take a little bit and let's, let's like, okay, let's, let's get together, somebody, any, any of you, let's get together and let's work on this. Councillor Gray, um, do you have any people that you've partnered with other organizations in town, anybody who could provide some of the assistance that you seem to need? Um, I think I'm the first one that's doing this. So, like this, I'm not talking about rehabilitation centers. I'm talking about a homeless shelter, soup kitchen, slash rehabilitation center. So no, I've never really, I've never found anybody that's on this page with me. I'm sorry, I was unclear, it's my fault, I okay. apologize. Swan River has a lot of organizations that are working together. There are a lot of groups that are trying to address some of those problems. Have you approached any of them about building a cooperative process? Because uh, <coughs> your proposal is in the kindest words, premature. Let me give you an example. The single rate for social assistance for all needs in Manitoba is $677. So what you're suggesting is that um, social, social assistance recipients, if you're saying most of these people are social assistance recipients, are going to give up all but $77 of their money for this process. They would. Well, some might, some might not. Well, they get three meals out of it, three of them. Like, okay. just let counselors. Sorry, I, I'm just, all I'm saying to you is that it seems to me that building from there and, and saying, here's a model where we dealt with four or five people, and, and in fact, people are prepared to do that, might be a better model than saying that 25 to 50 people are going to do it without necessarily evidence of that. Because I can tell you that um, the Paw French community used to operate a homeless shelter in the Paw. Mm -hmm. There is provincial funding for that, by the way. And had no end of problems. And in fact, um, the real problem was that nobody was prepared to give up any of their money for any sake of that. I'm not saying it's not possible you could do that. What I'm saying is that your plan which is a paragraph, is premature. You need to build a plan. It's $300,000 is a lot of money. It's, it's more than $1,500 per taxpayer. And you, you have to show that, in fact, you're going to have an operational success. Otherwise, it's, it's the, there are three things. First, you'd have chosen operational sec success. Secondly, you, you'd have to show how that would be fund on an ongoing basis, and more importantly than that, I'll come back to Constable Morio's point um, on the Early Childhood Learning Center, that um, before I came on council, or Constable when Tony came on council, the council decided that it wasn't going to really do grants, it was going to do something different, in fact it's a whole different process that's being mm -hmm. considered. And so, if we do that, um, my question to you is exactly what his question was. If we decide we gave you $300,000 or $400,000 because these things have expansive budgets, um, what's to stop another organization with an equally laudable goal from coming forward and saying, come on town, you gave these guys $400,000, why shouldn't we give us $400,000? Having said all that, 
the goal you propose is incredibly laudable. It's just that you're way ahead. You're, the ask is way before you're ready to present your plan. You really need to build some partnerships and you need to get some data together. In my opinion. I appreciate your opinion. But I have been working with these people for two years <coughs> and I know exactly what is on the streets and what is not. Whereas none of you have been out there with me. Sorry, but I'm going to just say it. Feeding the homeless, seeing what's going on at the bridge while they're sleeping under there in the summer times. Winter times, I don't know what they're doing. It's scary to think that there's humans out there like that. I know, you know, you could say Africa's got starving children or whatever, but and Winnipeg, but you know, this is Swan River. And we face the same problems as big cities. I mean, look at just three weeks ago, murder. I mean, these things are preventable. Uh, we need to grab the bull by the horns and, and really, you know what, this, this plan, it's doable. It's very doable. And we are a private organization. We don't run under no government. We're not, you know what, we do this out of the kindness of our hearts. And yeah, I do know how many people are on the streets here in Swan River. There's 60. And I do know how many mouths go hungry and children and mothers that came throughout the summer. I couldn't do it in the winter, otherwise I would, because I don't have a building. So yeah, I do know. And I'm not premature. I know. Okay, so David, and Wes, we appreciate your presentation. And I think that uh, council will have a discussion further about it and, and respond to you uh, and, uh, and any other further questions, okay? Well, I thank you guys okay. for having us <coughs> for you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to 4.5, so we're having Transit Bed 2018 draft financial statements about a report. Items, amortization, and so forth. 
the change in net financial assets for the year plus the balance of the year, the year gives the balance of net. And the bottom part is the change in surplus, accumulated surplus. And the appropriation to reserve is shown on these statements instead of the next page as required by public sector accounting standards for non for profit organizations. The next page is the statement of operations that shows revenue and, and expenses. And as I already mentioned there was the in twenty seventeen there was the public transit infrastructure fund of seventy nine thousand towards the ambulance storage facility. It's a one time thing annual operating grant is uh, based on, it's calculated as 37.5% of operating expenses. So the operating expenses were a little lower in 2018 than in 2017, so the annual operating grant from the province of Manitoba is a little lower from 22,000 to 20,000. There's the grant from the province, the grant from the town, and user fees are down slightly from last year, from 13,000 down to just under 12,000. Expenses are all pretty much on the par with budget. For rent that's paid to the town of Swan River, it budgeted only for utilities and insurance so that the storage facility in the town yard but upon further reflection uh, recorded an amount for office space right here in the town office and since the grant from the province is based on 37.5 percent of expenses then we want to maximize the expenses so $200 a month uh, was recorded for uh, office space right here for the dispatcher. And the uh, amortization, that's the amortization of tangible capital assets. Uh, it's in the capital fund, but uh, part of the Mini handy van is used for bylaw enforcement and animal protection services, and so uh, <coughs> the portion of the amortization is charged to those departments on the town and shown as a recovery in the operating fund here of $2,000. So the annual surplus. Uh, deficit in the operating fund of about $164. So pretty much broken, almost broken. This page is the statement of cash flows. It shows where the cash came from and where it went to. So we're collecting the grant that was receivable from the province. Uh, brought cash in in 2018. of the, or the town holds the handy band's uh, funds in, in its own bank account. So the only cash that the handy band has uh, on itself is the, the cash paid fees in December that didn't get deposited until January. So that's the $184. Notes to the financial statements so just explain the purpose of the organization and the significant accounting policies. <coughs> uh, down at the bottom of that page seven, the, the storage building is amortized over 25 years, the handy bands over seven years, and equipment and computers over five years. The 
next page there. Note three is the explains the problems in Manitoba grants receivable. I already mentioned that the annual operating grant is thirty seven point five percent of operating expenses. <coughs> so that's uh, fifty three thousand for twenty eighteen. Expenses are 53,000. The grant is 37.5% of that, so that's 20,000. The province gives an interim advance payment of 10,000, and so there's a balance expected to be coming from the province of 9,800. Um, the next uh, page, the accounts payable for crew liabilities, just breaks that down. Pension plan that mentions that the employee of the handy man is a member of the town's uh, pension plan. And it talks about how the municipal employee's pension plan manages its funds and so forth. The end of the second paragraph there says that the contributions made to the plan are $1,400 per the year. At the bottom, note six related party, the Hannity Band uh, committee members consist of the members of town council, so as such the organization is controlled by the town and county standards require related, uh, the nature of related party to disclose the facts. That note, note seven, says that the uh, handbag receives a significant portion of its funding from the province and the town, and so it's economically dependent upon grants to continue um, operations. And the last piece <coughs> is the tangible capital assets, and there weren't any acquisitions or dispositions, just amortization was the only change in the year. That's the end of my presentation. Um, in light of the fact that we didn't maximize the provincial grant, would it be wise for us to increase the rent and pay the town of Swan River uh, in the 2019 budget? I guess whatever rate would get us all the money out of Winnipeg would be appropriate. By what was charged to another organization that rents office space and took that as a guideline. Okay. Any questions? Councillor Gray. <coughs> Would it be safe to say, that, or is it the case that amortization for the equipment and so on is not an expense that the province pays for? That's correct. They, they, and they, they pay fund only for towards operating expenses. Okay. If we rented vehicles instead of owning them or rented buildings, that would be an operational expense. As opposed to amortizing. Yes? I guess you could look into that. Okay. I just, uh, because I look at this, at the deficit, we, we didn't budget at all that I can see, and maybe there is a reason. But we didn't budget at all for the amortization. We have eight thousand dollars worth of expenses, which are not real expenses. I mean, they're they're expenses because there's you have to provide the service, which includes rent and the administration fees. Um, do you have any opinion on whether or not those are reasonable market fees? Are they low? Are they high? Because obviously, if they're low we can increase them to what a reasonable market rent is. I'm a little uncomfortable saying that we're going to raise them to whatever level we need to get the maximum because I don't think that's lawful. I think we actually have to have market rent. Um, and so I just want your opinion as to whether or not there, you have an idea of what you think the appropriate, are these the appropriate markets for the administration that's done and the, um, and, and the uh, rent that's paid? or is there room to increase that? Well, 
like uh, as Harry said, he compared it against another organization that rents office space from the town of Swanford. So I would say what like the number he is using is fairly relevant at fair market value. Um, but I do like the idea of perhaps leasing vehicles for the future because that would definitely increase the operating expenses, which in turn would increase the operating rent from the product. Provided we do some research, and, and, and Terry well may deal it, or he may ask us to do it, as to how uh, the province defines uh, yeah. the eligible expenditures, right. it, it's very possible that a capital vehicle lease will not be allowed, but it could be. Otherwise, um, the incentive for owning versus, versus leasing um, you know, would favor leasing, because right now, uh, other than utilizing the public transit infrastructure fund for capital acquisitions, uh, you're funding your own purchases this way as opposed to uh, you know, getting a, a lease payment now at the end of the lease. It would depend on whether it's a, defined to be a capital lease or an operating lease, whether there's a fair market value purchase option at the end of the lease versus a $1 purchase option. So a little bit of uh, research and uh, discussion with the province would be in order. I should explain that the, the province does have a handy transit vehicle replacement program and the town did receive monies from that for the purchase of the larger handy van, but those monies were not available <coughs> for the mini handy van. Okay. And, and so uh, the, on an annual basis, the province Provides funding only for operating, but we do have the vehicle replacement program for the vehicle. And and when that larger vehicle expires or is is ended, its useful life, that program, assuming it still exists, would allow us to replace it from that same fund. We don't have to <coughs> refund it ourselves. Um, yeah, That's the current we, model. We would, we would apply for a grant under the vehicle replacement program. Uh, Yes. One last question. Did you um, check and see whether there are um, rules with respect to ownership of related companies? Because it may well be that um, you own other entities that could <coughs> own, the build, own the equipment and rent it to us with no um, purchase ever contemplated. That seems to me a logical thing as long as there's not an issue with respect to related entities. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further questions? Bruce or Ian, do you have anything else to add? Yes, uh, Deanne is going to uh, run over the audit report and the audit findings letter okay. for council. Thank you. So I'll ask you to go back to page one for the financial, um, the financial statements. And as you may have noticed, the audit report looks quite a bit different from, um, from previous years. Our profession changed the report uh, yet again for, a, for any audits ending after December 14, 2018. So now the opinion, the audit opinion, is now at the beginning of the report instead of at the end of the report as it has been in the past. And as you can see, it is now two full pages um, instead of about a page and a half with more detail being added to the audit auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. So that's something I just wanted to point out. Uh, so the first section is the audit opinion now. And this states that we have the audit of the financial statements of Swan River Handy Transit Van, which comprise the statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2018, and the statements of changes in net financial assets and accumulated surplus operations and cash flows for the year then ended, and notes the to the financial statements, including a summary of significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the organization as of December 31st, 2018, and the results of its operations and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards for government not for profit organizations. The next section, basis for opinion, we conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Our, respons our responsibilities under those standards are fur further described 
and the responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements contained <coughs> in our report. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. The next section, responsibilities of management and those charged with governance for the financial statements. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards for government, not-for-profit organizations, and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of financial statements that are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. In preparing the financial statements, management is responsible for assessing the organization's ability to continue as a going concern, as well as uh, for overseeing the organization's financial reporting process. So the last section describes our responsibilities for the audit of the financial statements. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with Canadian generally accepted Auditing standards will always detect a material misstatement where it exists. As part of our audit, in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards, we exercise <coughs> professional judgment and maintain professional skepticism throughout the audit. We also identify and assess the risks of material misstatement of the financial statements, obtain an understanding of internal control relevant to the audit, evaluate the appropriateness of accounting policies used, conclude on the appropriateness of management use of the going concern basis and evaluate the overall presentation structure and content of the financial statements. We communicate with those charged with governance regarding, among other matters, the plan scope and timing of the audit and significant audit findings, including any significant deficiencies in internal control that we, that we identify during our audit. So that is the new audit report. So you can see uh, for those of you that have looked at these audit reports over the years and the changes, uh, audits are much, much more than just ticking and checking and making sure the numbers uh, agree to the, the financial records of the organization. Um, it's, it's all encompassing of right from the top of those charged with governance, which in this case is council, who delegated that responsibility to the committee uh, and the, the financial day-to-day has been uh, looked after by the accounting staff in the town of Swan River. But we now have to ask those pointed questions and it's just part of what our profession has uh, asked us to do to be able to sign an audit report. Questions about fraud, questions about governance, you know, all of those things are now. Uh, so we have to ask some pointed questions and uh, they're directed at management and those charged with governance. So. This new audit report just kind of lays that all out so that everybody who's involved in um, the organization, the auditor, and those readers of the financial statement and the users of the financial statement can understand what the playing field is that we're working with here. So, sorry. Okay. okay. Moving on to the audit findings letter, which I believe you all have a copy of. So this letter has just been prepared to assist you with your review of the financial statements of the Swan River Handy Transit Band for the year ending December 31st, 2018. We have completed the audit of the financial statements with the exception of the following items, completing our discussions with the committee and obtaining evidence of the committee's approval of the financial statements, which we are doing at this moment. And once these items have been completed, we will date and sign our audit report. So under some significant matters arising, we did not make any changes to the audit plan. We have not identified any other significant matters that we wish to bring to your attention at this time, and we encountered no significant difficulties in our audit. Those letters are on all the delegation section of the agenda. Under accounting policies, the significant accounting policies by the entity are outlined in note two of the financial statements. There were no significant changes in accounting policies, uh, significant accounting estimates. The following estimates and judgments are contained in the financial statements. The estimated operating grant receivable from province of Manitoba, which Terry already described, the book value of the capital assets, 
Based on audit work performed, we are satisfied with the estimates made by management. We did not identify any financial statement disclosures that are particularly significant, sensitive, or require significant judgments that we believe should be drawn to your attention. We did not identify any misstatements during our audit and did not request <coughs> management to correct any misstatements. We did not identify any control deficiencies that in our judgment would be considered significant deficiencies. And we have requested a written representation from management in respect to their responsibility for the preparation of the financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector nine standards for government not-for-profit organizations. And we did not identify any other matters to bring to your attention at this time. Any questions on anything in that letter? I, I first want to just comment that <clears throat> it's interesting that the opinion was put first because you know, obviously a lot of us are looking at that. You know, the whole package is very important, but the opinion and, of course, the audit findings because that's something that we should always be concerned with and what we uh, brought out of it. So um, it obviously tells us that uh, we have a good person that's taking care of most of this stuff for us. So. Well, and I, I think um, I certainly would be remiss <coughs> if I didn't thank yes. Terry, um, Deanna, and I both. Deanna's the mm -hmm. one that that does all the, uh, the hard work on the audit side of things, and uh, Terry is, uh, does a great job yes. of uh, putting the audit. Yes, thank you, Terry, for all your assistance. Mm -hmm. Comments are great. In the old days, this would be an unqualified opinion? No reservations, no qualifications. It is a clean audit mm -hmm. opinion. <coughs> thank you, Arthur, for adding 10 pages for one. Councilor <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> There's an adage that you can keep your mouth shut and be perceived a fool or open it and remove all doubt. I'm of average intelligence. I can read this and it makes sense to me. What is the need for you people to come and read it to me when I can read this at home? Help me, because I'm sure there's an answer. <coughs> there is, and I can answer that for you. Thank you. Our um, governing body, the uh, CPA Canada, and the uh, rules that we have to follow, um, require us to meet with those charged with governance and present this to them, <clears throat> both the audit findings letter, be, because we could, we don't know, we could submit the letter to management and it never reach council. So all of the important things that we may have to say in here, luckily the most important thing that we have to say in here is that we didn't find anything that needed to change, but we need to know that those charged with governance, and we have to document that in our file, and after you approve the financial statements by a motion, we get a copy later, and we have to have that documentation of that motion on our file, or our practice inspectors come along and select files of ours, and they have to meet those standards. So, yes, it's, uh, you know, audit after audit, we're required to do this with whether it's a board of directors or a town council, uh, we, we have to bore you with all of the details. <laughs> I don't find it boring. And just hope that you don't fall asleep on us. But, uh, you know, theoretically, but that's why. the mayor could bring it to us. We read it, we sign it, give it back, and in, the, yeah. in the presence of our CFO, and it's done. That takes five minutes. And and we would that would not meet the standard that we have to meet. No. And there's also a, you know, a questionnaire that we have developed asking some of those questions that you heard when Deanna went through the audit findings letter, things, questions that, that talk about um, what is the, uh, you know, how are decisions made for this particular organization? Is there any um, um, addressing of the possibility of fraud and, and those kind of things? And so we need, uh, some replies back from not not the whole council or not the whole committee, but uh, for those individuals charged with governance of the organization. So, in this case, that questionnaire, uh, a copy of it was directed to uh, chief financial officer, and a copy was addressed to the mayor and the mm -hmm. acting uh, chief operating officer. So. Uh, Right. And you. we got our reply back, and uh, so you. everything is good. And this is the this is the final outcome of the audit. Thank you, Councilor Morio. Well, I always look forward to your 
reports. Like, it took me four years to wrap my head around yeah. how to read them. And now, now you change it change again. Change it again. Yeah. Yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll take that uh, responsibility off back to Toronto or Ottawa or wherever it is. <laughs> you don't know how many changes. hours I spent yeah. trying to figure out these things, and I think I got my head wrapped around them all, and now you go again and change it. So <laughs> I, I take it from that that it would be helpful because the opinion paragraph is now first. We should just <laughs> at least we can we can say it's a clear audit opinion and we can get that out of the way first. Then if we lose everybody else going through all the other paragraphs, you know it was a, a good audit. Okay. Thank you. These changes to the audit report that you mentioned the Toronto, it's actually worldwide. It is, yeah. Unfortunately, our our accounting uh, standards are driven by international standards now. Things like going concern and that, that's, that's a worldwide issue. And the, the public has demanded more uh, from the auditors in these reports, and that's why it's, it's a double digit size. All right, well, if that's everything, then uh, we thank you very much for coming and, uh, and all the work that you've done. We need a resolution to accept the audit. Isn't that, isn't that the whole point that you you had to have that? Otherwise, you can't sign the, lo the letter. Isn't that? I, I may have missed it, but that's what I thought. Yeah, I have it all ready to go here. I'll move that. And Terry has the one that needs your signatures. Okay. So uh, if we want then to, with that, we'll just skip to 8.3, and I'll read that resolution. Result of the Swan River Handy Transit Band Draft Financial Statement for the year ended December 31st, 2018, together with the Independent Auditor's Report thereon, be approved as presented, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. All favor? It's carried. <coughs> Not sure that we have to approve the audit opinion, but fair enough. Aye. I don't think we so can. that makes it official then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I think I asked that question last year. <coughs> yeah. I'm guessing you ask it every year. It just drives me crazy. Okay, well, so moving well, on. We have new, new members of council, though, yeah, so it's a good question. Yeah, well, I, I might not know. <laughs> Reception and petitions. We have nothing there. But communications. Hudson Dunn, Councillor uh, White, and Councillor Delay. Sure. private meeting. <coughs> Hudson Bay Road Association AGM representatives. We have that information there, and, and who would like to attend? I, I guess uh, uh, Councillor Antonio and I have both discussed that we perhaps would attend uh, on a actually a cost savings uh, mission. Actually, and that was something to do with my business and, and uh, doing some work as we're heading that way. So we would save the municipality some dollars as we're traveling up there. So. I think that we're both still wanting to consider going, so... Does anybody else want to go? Usually I, a couple I, of us go to it. So. I actually think this is kind of this particular group, this particular time, may well be an important time for us to make a big splash there. So. For me, if others wanted to, I just think this is an important piece yeah. of us changing our dynamic. If we're going to change our flow going north, actually making a splash is kind of an important. Piece Absolutely. Of the yeah. So yeah, for me, good. if anybody wanted to go, I would. I can't. I'm not going. I can't go. I'll be in Thompson, but um, I encourage whoever to go. Okay. Anybody else? I would love to go, but I got scheduled conference yeah. unless that changes. You're just going for the day? Two no, days we'll go then. for a couple of days. We'll go oh. on the night before the, so probably we'll leave on the 2nd of, of April uh, from the store here and, uh, and head up north for a couple of days. So we have uh, resolved, oh sorry, <coughs> the representatives shall be uh, Mayor Jacobson and uh, Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Can I have a mover? Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> okay, put on 6.2. We have pool hours. Pool hours report.
report? Do we have anybody, Councilor Gray, do you have anything to report on that at all? Or? Not really, it's there. Okay. It speaks for itself. Okay. Um, is it something new that we're going to see on a regular basis? <coughs> no. Or? This is something <coughs> that we want to um, talk about generally. Um, The, philosophically, we have agreed on a number of things, <coughs> I think, um, although we haven't necessarily put those into policies and practice yet, and that is <coughs> going to be. But one of the things is that items, to the extent that it's possible, have to pay for themselves. Uh, one of the things that was frustrating for me was that we were not able to really come up with a meaningful determination of how many when people were using the pool, or at least at a rate that was viable. So that, for instance, during the day, the school division was using the pool, but that they were paying a substantially reduced rate. Not only were they not covering any of the capital or other costs, they weren't even covering the operating costs of salaries. And so it seemed to us, I think, that that should not continue, that we should look at restricting hours of the pool, leaving it open, but restricting hours to um, reduce costs where we were not actually receiving revenues. There are a number of other policy issues that have to come up. But, um, but that's one. And so we're presenting this report to Council to um, talk about it, to have feedback. I don't know that we need to do um, bylaws for the operation of, of pools. But we did not want, as a committee, to go ahead and change structure without having council have a discussion about it. Um, if it's acceptable that we would restrict the hours to accord with those times when it's going to actually be used, then we will undertake that as a committee. We have a committee meeting coming up. I don't even remember what our next committee meeting is. That's the uh, where we both that night. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, that's right. We're doing one ours before theirs. Mm -hmm. So you have scenario one and scenario two. <clears throat> yeah, those were prepared by Patty. There is some further debate, but we wanted to present these because this was the starting point. The philosophical underpinning is this: um, we want to have the pool open as much as practicable, but it has to be open for times when people are actually going to utilize it. So. People can tell us whether or not we should have the pool open by whether or not they utilize it. If they don't utilize it, it shouldn't be open. And users should generally pay at least the <coughs> operational costs. And so we think, we know that the school division is going to be unhappy with that, but that's unfortunate. Um, we shouldn't, the taxpayers of Swan River shouldn't carry the cost of operation, uh, the operational costs, the, the staffing costs, the those those kind of costs, we should at least be recovering that for anything that's done. And, and we're certainly prepared to have alternates. And you'll see in the program uh, and in the letter that follows um, a suggestion that maybe the school division wants to rent it and hire our staff or some staff if that's what they want. Uh, we don't, I, I don't really care as long as we're not subsidizing cost. That's the issue. So. Okay. It's open for discussion or okay. questions. Yeah, I, I I agree that whoever uses it should pay for it. And, and yeah, have you approached the school division with that concept? Not yet. Okay. Uh, some are going to send you because you have such great relations over there. Huh. <laughs> 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 I was wondering about uh, somewhere in, not in this one. Uh, we were actually going to send you the public forum. We're we going to. And I believe I read that in there earlier that they're going to talk about public forum with people. The public could come and talk about. Yes. Thoughts. I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, we are going. I mean, we're, it doesn't just. In this case, we use the pool because it was the most egregious and obvious example. It applies to the arena. It applies to everything. But we we want to change the model. And just as perhaps there will be people who are unhappy, as, as Don Brown's unhappy with the idea of, of people who pay for their own water and their own garbage. Um, there may be people who suggest that um, people shouldn't pay for their own other services. And uh, quite candidly, services are services. They're different than general governance. And cleaning the streets helps everybody. 
policing and fire protection helps everybody, and so we're not going to break those up. But other costs should be covered by the people who use them. That's philosophically the point. There is another piece when we're done that where I have a resolution that, that may be a bit of a surprise. Okay, Councillor uh, I just have uh, one thing to add on the full hours. I'm on the committee and I'll bring it to the committee level, but I did have um, some concern comments, I guess, from the general use of the public uh, in my sector, in my job, obviously. Um, the question as to why we are so, that we close the pool on Saturdays at five o'clock as opposed to looking at changing the Saturday hours, um, whether it would be at, at two, to, two to nine or something of that sort. Later in the evening, um, for example, we had tournaments in who said that they would have loved to use the pool, but it's closed when they're just getting on the hockey ice, but we would love to go there afterwards. So there's just those, that, that concern is the only concern I have, but I do agree with everything else as, in regards to um, paying fee for service, but just hours on Saturday, I would like to revisit. <coughs> we'll discuss that at our committee level. Councilor Just to put this in, into perspective, these two proposals are worth about fifty thousand dollars a year. This would be my question. Each of them are relatively comparable dollar-wise. It's it's the actual operational components that they differ in. Saving. Yes. 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 It'd be a savings about fifty thousand dollars a year. Thank you. Okay, so um, where do you uh, take it from here? Like you talked a bit about. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if we, I mean, uh, it's an administrative mm -hmm. piece that the committee can uh, direct. I don't know that we need a motion or anything. No. Well, I, I think we would have a public forum first to right. outline the two options. Oh, no, no, I, yeah. And then once maybe an option presents itself to the forefront, we would just pass a motion for administration to adopt scenario one or two. Sure. Or whatever scenario would come up. Or, yeah. So this is a public document, but does the committee want, say, like the report uh, posted on our web page? Yeah, there's no reason uh, it should be. Uh, everything should be posted. There's no reason it shouldn't be. People have to have the information right. so they can, if they want to come, complain, or, or scream. Or Even if it's in the preliminary stages, you, you've got things kind of outlined already where, which direction you're going. So yeah. it's good for people to at least read that and be able to have it on. absorb it. And they can complain or say whatever they want. Now, before we post it, I think somebody should send something to Patty or somebody or Derek should send somebody send something to the school division to alert them that that um, we're looking at changes and they need to be alerted to that because I, I don't want them to first read about it when a, an angry parent phones the superintendent to say, "What's this about? My kid's not going to be able to swim next year at school." I think we want to. Let them know that. I would think that the recreation manager should be doing that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I guess the on that, then we'll wait to hear a little bit more from the I look forward to the public forum as well. Okay. So this this will be ready to uh, and present this to a budget process as well, correct? Yes. yes. This will affect this year. Yes. I assume that the public forum could be within the next month or so. Well, I, I'm assuming it's going to be in March. Um, that we will be in the process. It's going to be part of the planning for the budget. That's right. what our plan is. Okay. Fair That's our expectation. <coughs> At least that was, I, I think <coughs> the three committee members believe that. I'm not sure if it's universally <coughs> believed. So any other questions from anybody else? Um, there are two other issues arising from the pool. Okay. The first is we need, we don't have a community wrap, a second uh, a community wrap for the Swan Valley Recreation Commission. One of my colleagues, I can't remember which one, is going to be the secondary rep. I think we're probably all three of us are going oh, to be all three of us. So we can have quorum at least yeah. for the first Right, because we could we wouldn't have quorum. That's right, it was all yeah. both. That's why I couldn't figure out which one it was. <laughs> so um, I'm moving that um, John Mantoni and Jason Delore be appointed uh, representatives to the Swan Valley Recreation Commission. Effects district, right? mm -hmm. district Recreation yeah. Commission okay. effective immediately. Um, that's not the way I think it should in the long view. You know, you've just heard me talk that's about that. Interim or something. It's just yes. for now we need to do it, otherwise, we won't have quorum. Yeah, okay. Looks like <coughs> Okay, so uh, Mr. Pool, you'll put that together there so we can 
So it should be a sub item 621. 621. <coughs> okay. Does it show on here? I'll look right now. I just gotta back up and go back in again. Yeah, it's there. Oh, I don't know. Just gotta back up and go back in again. Or just hit the refresh. Or refresh, I guess. I just do it that. I know what the other one was, but it's under unfinished business. It's all of the things under unfinished business. There's all that Councilor Antonio and Councilor Delory be appointed to the district rec committee. Is that what we want? Uh, I think it probably should say as interim. Well, no, just effective immediately. We can change appointees anytime. Okay. Okay. Right? We can, yeah. Effective immediately. I'll just you can change it, but effective immediately. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, the letter from the Life Saving Society is all part of the pool. Uh, let's move on to Con Swan Mendel's Condo Association letter of support. We had a chance to read that. <coughs> Is there anything you need to do about it, or is it just information? Information. Cool. Okay, yeah. so we'll I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll just be writing a letter yeah. in support. That's fine. I don't you did write a letter, didn't you? It's, I uh, drafted it. Oh, yeah. And that letter can come from you. It doesn't necessarily have to come from uh, Okay, so Swan Valley Rise, we have correspondence <coughs> there. I guess that's, again, just for information, I, I guess. It, well, if Bryce, uh, Chairman Bryce wants to speak on that, then. Chairman. The chair is in front Okay, so then the representative. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know whether which one of us. Uh, Go ahead. Councillor Gray. Okay, so the reason I forwarded <coughs> that, I've given everybody here a hard time with planning or strategic planning. Um, and I think rightfully so, but candidly. But um, it stuns me to know that we had two councillors on rise who apparently had the first part of a strategic plan developed or used part of a community process to develop a strategic plan in 2016 and never again looked at it either. I don't know who the, council, who the councillors were. Somebody better fess off. Anyway. Um, They're not here anymore. Yeah, okay. Which led to an incredible exchange of emails last week. It did. It was unbelievable to me. So it started with um, Dwayne making, uh, Councillor White making a suggestion about uh, whether we should go to Flin Flon or Thompson. And my first question was, well, are, is this to do with Rise? Is there something that we, do we do this? And we went through 40 emails, 50, to get to the end, which was, no, it has nothing to do with RISE. It's somebody else entirely who does it. And, and that two-hour window encompasses all of the problems and challenges of RISE <coughs> particularly, but also of our entire structure. We have everybody running around doing a bunch of things instead of being focused on what they're supposed to do. Rise particularly, and I think Council with Tony and I um, are going to be proposing to Rise that there be a division 
we have one group, one person or one group do the tourism, and, but deal with it in a different way than it has been, and another person do it with pure economic development. We're going to and just divide them. They're not one referring to the other or anything. We're just going to get that out of the way. And we'll see how that goes. Um, but um, it comes about, we'll, it'll come up again in a few minutes when we talk about donations. Because the, we should talk about our structure. Because we really should be doing pure governance and not some of this stuff. And we should be creating outside groups who handle those things. and. and some of you may have heard my comments on the radio, and some others may have heard about them. But I firmly believe that eight councillors from four municipalities with a combined population of 10,000 people are not the people who should be doing economic development. Um, the, the, we need people who actually know economic development to be on that board. Just as in tourism, we need people who know tourism. Just as in, as in, I don't know, each activity, and that we should stay out of that and should fund that because we have some proposals for how we should deal with things coming up. And uh, in any event, that's what's going to happen out of rise coming up. Um, I don't know how the other municipalities will react to that. I'm told that some of them didn't react very well to my other comments, um, but. It is what it is, as most people here know, I'm unlikely to be deterred by the fact that someone's unhappy with what I'm saying. Okay. Did I miss anything, Councilman? That sounds uh, pretty uh, significantly, significantly accurate, um, the presentation I was to talk about, I guess, would be deferred to at a later time, but it, it was to coincide of, of exactly what you're speaking of, yes. Okay, <clears throat> seven reports of the committee, 7.1 Superintendent Works Report. Questions that we can filter through, Mr. Poole. Um, I see in your uh, report you mentioned recycling operations, and I know the Deadline was last Friday. Will we be having? Or, I, I don't think, think there's anything on the agenda to deal with that tonight. Will we be having a TME committee meeting prior? Yeah, I'm hoping to schedule a date tonight. Okay. With the members. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, because I don't have. Sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Moria. Um, I see in here that we're <coughs> still changing water meters. What water meters are we changing? Uh. Just, we didn't replace all the meters, <coughs> so some were given, some were, were new, and they were just given a gray box where we can apply the radio readings. So those meters have gotten older because of use, and over a million gallons we, we replaced them. So we'll, we'll constantly be replacing, there's several, <coughs> several hundred that, that were not replaced. So, so we, have, we already have that inventory purchased? That that uh, not a whole lot. No. no, we do not have a whole lot of inventory. So what was purchased before was just the radio boxes. The gray boxes for the meters that we were not going to change, and then brand new meters with the radio installed in them for the meters that were taken out. Councilor Friesen. I'm not sure this is when to ask, but do you have the staff that could maybe move some snow in front of uh, Clancy's? I've had people coming into the store asking who's supposed to clean that sidewalk because it's kind of bad right now. And I said it's the owner of the property who doesn't live here and the suggestion was made maybe the town could do it and bill them on a tax bill. Is we, that possible? That's what would happen. We sent a letter out last week saying to, to the owners saying if they don't do it, we will and charge them. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Just so light. That's a bylaw or that's a policy? And does it say anywhere that we can build it? Yes, we can add it yeah. to taxes, yes. Okay. I think Thanks a total of okay. nine okay. properties in the commercial central zone are getting letters. <coughs> Council Gray? Um, 
yeah, I think it's in the new spot that if we provide a service we can add it to it. Um, two things. The first is, are we considering, we're looking at, um, I'm a little concerned with doing things piecemeal. Everybody will already know where I'm going with this, that we have no vision and no plan. And I'm particularly concerned that we're doing things piecemeal with respect to recycling. That we're <coughs> recycling, but we're not doing garbage and we're not doing the landfill. All of that is one thing. And, and I can't understand why we wouldn't look at how we do it. Now that doesn't mean individual pieces can't be done individually, if that's the most efficient way. <coughs> but uh, it is necessarily not the most efficient way to do it. I'll put it another way. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to do it. And, and we should be looking at the entire package. So if we're doing a tender for recycling, it should only last as long as the last of either garbage or whatever so that we look at the totality of how we're spending our money and whether or not own force processes are the best way of doing things or whether contracting is the best way of doing things. And each one has to be its own merit. I mean, quite candidly, and as much as people may hate what I say, or not hate what I say, um, I'm consistent in the sense that things should be done in routine way, the most efficient way for us. So, own force has the same process as any other procurement in my view. That's one point. And so I'll leave that for the moment. I'll come back because I see Councilor Delorier, Councilor Delorier has thoughts on this point. I just want to make comment on your comment as far as it's almost like you're a bug on the wall in our committee meetings and I would I invite you to join because we have, we have those exact discussions and <coughs> how we're going to stage them because you, you hit the nail on the head is right now we have different contractors doing different pieces. We have to stage them so perhaps at some point in time they all end at the same time so we can put it out on mass we're just not quite there yet but we do need to provide recycling services on the days in short term so our committee had not only a, not only the committee from this council but for the last year or two we've been looking at all those pieces so it definitely is being looked at and I encourage if you want to sit in on one of our committee meetings more than welcome to and I believe we really don't have enough <laughs> Uh, to, just to sh add short, the proposal that went out for recycling services included alternative prices for garbage, commercial pickup, commercial well, have, have our current, has our current department done a proposal? Uh, yeah, to the committee. Okay. Yes. I'd be interested to see those. The second thing that I have, Mr. Your Worship, is when the heck are we going to do an application to the Public Utilities Board with respect to water and sewer? We are expecting to get our rate study done in May of 19. Okay. And that is that is a prelim end date of when Associate Engineering believes that they'll be sending to the PV. How did we come upon this organization to do it? Uh, it was it was done by an RFP over two years ago, but uh, they failed to provide a sufficient rate study. So we and did we pay them? Uh, yes, and they are. Can I get that work? Yeah, because I'm prepared to do inadequate work to be paid for it too. Oh well, it's. Uh, and that, that was it, is we, we were paying them as the work was, was getting done. They got 70% of it done. And I guess we didn't pay them 100% of, of what the, the RFP did say. My question is, <clears throat> why haven't we asked for our money back? Or why didn't the contract provide that they had to do certain things with the more penalties? Because I'm sick and tired of paying for stuff use other words, when of no value, engineering for the pool, lawyer who can't seem to do his documents. Um, I, I, we just keep paying, and I don't understand why. I don't understand the benefit of it. I don't understand how it is, and, and, and it'll come back and come to talk about budgeting because we do, we're doing this ass backwards still, and, and I know we're going to change it for next year, but the idea of doing budget before we have an idea of what we're going to do, 
the idea of doing budgets where we change the numbers so that they're um, and, you know, manipulated just offends me, just as it offends me to pay someone for doing work that's inadequate and then not and say to them, oh, that's okay. Yeah, no, it, and they it was hiring them. I guess it, it wasn't like they were rehired or we, we didn't say it was okay. We paid out 75% of the contract and said this is not good enough. So they, they, they agreed to restart and, uh, and this was what happened last fall. So do we have a contract with them? Yeah. Can we see that for next meeting? Yes. And can we see the amounts of monies that were paid under the contract? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Further <coughs> questions? Okay. I didn't read the resolution first, but <coughs> resolved that the superintendent of works report be received. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. All in favor? That's carried. <coughs> Resolved that the handy bed report for January 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor White, or sorry, uh, Gray. Second by Councillor <coughs> Morio. All in favor? It's carried. Which committee deals with the handy bed? All of us. Yeah. Can we, can we put on a discussion about the handy bed? Okay. Council reports. We'll start with Councillor Friesen. So I really don't have anything to report. But I would like to just state an opinion about the co-op closing their dry goods. Um, I want to endorse uh, Merle Dvorak's letter to the Star and Times, who said a lot of things. So if anybody has to go, <coughs> go back and read it. That's all. Okay. Councillor Moria. Um, a couple meetings this period. Uh, February 11th, the personnel meeting <coughs> that evening just to discuss uh, items regarding the CEO search. Um, February 12th, we had a protective services committee where we reviewed bylaw, um, fire prevention's bylaw, and some more discussion on the Livingston Agreement. Um, February 12th, again in the afternoon, had a Valley in the Mountains uh, meeting. Be more to come there. Uh, lots of discussion on potentially uh, retasking, reformatting the whole um, organization along with RISE and how they can that stuff fit together and not duplicate the uh, efforts of one party to the next, as to what Mr. Perry was uh, saying before, so that uh, we don't have two parties doing the same thing and not knowing what the other ones are doing. Um, also had an intern plan where we still need to keep moving forward with some um, others uh, items, but uh, there's potentially a, a total revision um, and rebranding there. And then the evening of February 12th, um, personnel committee um, met with uh, the representative um, headhunter from Summit uh, regarding the CEO search, and kicked off that search. And last Friday, February 15th, I went to Winnipeg. Uh, for my first meeting on the Provincial Municipal Justice Advisory Committee. Um, see that uh, there's a lot of stuff that'll be dealt, dealt with in that committee that'll be confidential. They had a signed kind of confidentiality agreements and, and whatnot, but uh, what I can share is that uh, we're very fortunate to have a representative at that table um, where we can have a lot of our voices that we were heard and brought forward to D Division and stuff like that, that now can go um, on the fast track towards the minister and that organization. So 
Good to hear. Um, so, and then I read, they gave us a PowerPoint that uh, brought up the new members and the committee as a whole because there was some new membership as to um, where our CMP services are in the province and regarding the contracts and different types of contracts. Um, learned that there's provincial contracts and federal contracts and which municipalities fit where and what. Found out that uh, we, uh, the Town of Swan Rivers contract is actually a grandfathered contract directly with the federal government and not through the provincial government, um, which affords us some uh, benefits as compared to the provincial contracts. Um, I'll share that uh, PowerPoint with you guys digitally once uh, I can get it scanned so that it does help. But it does, um, there was a few aha moments that were going there that the light bulb went off. Um, went there, so it's um, a very good committee that uh, we have representation on for the next uh, bit. Uh, we'll be meeting again in March um, to look at some of the um, they call priority projects, priority views, visions of where municipal policing um, in the province of Manitoba should be going and present towards the province so that it's not going piecemeal, everybody going the way there should be a strategic vision on policing across the province. So, so, it's, so it's a very good thing. It sounds like it's going to be a very interesting uh, thing. So, um, uh, with that, I'll also be, I'll be reaching out to all members, councils, and to the other uh, councils in the Valley as to uh, sort of like a poll and suggestions as to what they would like to be brought forward and discussed <coughs> and how it fits in with uh, that community. So that, uh, we can bring it all together as a voice. So, uh, a lot of the issues that we are experiencing here in the valley, um, from what I gather, is not unique to um, other areas of the province. It sounds like a, a broken record, uh, some of the issues that they're having. So, um, but, uh, that's all I got. That's something that may be to be part of that five <coughs> discussion as well. Right. So, so, Coming up, you'll have a couple meetings under your belt then. So. Yeah, like um, anything that I can share that they don't deem confidential, right. um, I'll definitely share with the rest of the council. Thank you. Councilman Tony. Uh, good afternoon. I'm not going to bore you with every single meeting that I've gone to, but I can tell you it's been a pretty large portfolio in the last <coughs> and ever, which I'm not complaining. I, I enjoy what I'm doing, and um, even though I find myself in several meetings a day and trying to juggle everything I, I, I couldn't have asked for a more rewarding experience to council and the and the community as a whole a couple of things I do want to touch on is um, the headhunter and I'm no, I, I, I've been some at the search group I've expressed it more than once and I'm very pleased that the community decided to go that route um, and there was I understand a letter to the editor in regards to CAOs and, and that sort of thing so I just want to um, acknowledge that we are <coughs> fulfilling our obligation of a CAO in a way that is more con uh, more concrete and more solid. So kudos to the committee for for, for going that, that way, because that's the way I strongly believe. Uh, meeting with uh, Valley in the Mountains, um, Rise, that whole organize, that whole set. Um, I've been doing a lot of research and continuing to work with each of those in terms of bringing back the uh, the CDC, the Community um, Development Corporation, um, which will be at a, at a later date. I'll have more to present to Council on that regard. Um, I do have a, a little bit of a, a, a concern or, or a question, I guess, in regards to this Council um, uh, meeting in a way that might not be as formal and as public as this forum in a way to share ideas, bounce off ideas off each other, work our, talk about our committees and things that are going on in, in terms of, you know, is this a way that we should be moving forward? Is this a way um, we shouldn't be moving forward? I, I, I agree, I guess, the, with the, I've always agreed that we need to be transparent, but sometimes there's, you know, just the need for us as comrades to sit down and say, hey, you know, what do you think of this idea, rather than opposed to um, be told or indicated that we shouldn't bring it to council in, a, in, a, in forms of court.
correspondence or in receiving an email that says, what are you doing when we could have had that meeting of comrades saying, you know, hey, this is an idea I have to pitch. What do you think about it? Is it something that I should do? Or is it something that in your past experience, what are you doing? Don't do that. You know, scrap it. So I, I would like to see a little bit more of a connect with us as, as a whole rather than a disconnect. Um, what that looks like, I'm not sure I understand. In the past, it may have been um, every the, the off Tuesdays of council that there were group that you got together. I don't know. I, I'm a new councillor and I need, uh, I would like to see some of that, what that looks like. I'm not sure at this point, but um, that's all, that's all I have for today's meeting. I'll just add, on the, on the off Tuesdays, like you had mentioned, <clears throat> there had been, if you want to call them planning sessions and things that you wanted to, you know, uh, bounce off of each other, whatever. Uh, it had been done, and eventually those items, if they either had any merit, they would uh, come before council and, and, and debate it or, or so forth. But you're right, there are some things that you may not want to bring out, you know, as, as, uh, if they're you know, newly conceived ideas that may not necessarily end up being fruitful, right? So I think that is something that we can talk about as far as if we want to use those Tuesdays or one Tuesday or whatever as a as planning sessions, not necessarily for making decisions of council, but items that we can definitely bounce off each other and and uh, and see where they can go from there. So I because I think that would be helpful, especially if you're in committees that you're you're sharing <coughs> uh, the the group with other municipalities. That sometimes you might come out of that with an idea or whatever that you want to bring forward and say, should we be doing this or not, you know, because otherwise you could bring something forward and, and, and uh, you know, uh, surprise everybody. So, anyways, Councillor Dory. Um, well, I had a <coughs> meeting on the 7th, the rec committee meeting. We've already talked a bit about some of the uh, uh, things that were born of that committee, i.e. the, uh, the two uh, proposals for reducing pool hours. And then after that meeting I was gone, I went <coughs> recently to beautiful British Columbia for work. So other than that, I was unfruitful in my council job. So. You're, you're always taking a good job. So. Yeah. Councilor White. Uh, February the 6th, I went to the uh, interagency meeting. <coughs> Before I go any further, though, I, I want to support Councilor Tony 100%. The whole idea of the email, we alluded to 50 emails trying to solve something earlier in the meeting. I don't think it's aborting, diverting our responsibilities as counselors to get together over coffee or lunch to talk about a concept. So it's solved before we bring it, it's solved at least discussed before we get to council. And then if the idea has merit, we can follow up further. But to have a meeting every time, a formal meeting, and I'm not hearing that we have to do it every time, uh, is a little time consuming. So. I think informal things are a wonderful way to solve things also, or to start the process. So at the Energy Agency, uh, there's all sorts of interesting little snippets that I thought were important. When our First Nations uh, partners, they lose their funding, their reserve funding, correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor, when they leave the reserve, and then they have to go on welfare. And this is all numbers that popped out at the, uh, they don't get reserve funding if they're living in town. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> uh, so, uh, we were, we were led to believe at the meeting that 70% of the people that are coming are from uh, South Wayak, and that hopefully when you're in negotiation with the chief, maybe we can find a way to help those people. Uh, at 4.30, the doors in Swan River close. So people of a, a cold, in an extreme cold situation, have no place to go. So I think that's a really serious thing. I'm not suggesting we give anybody a lot of money to solve that right away. But I don't know that there is a town plan, a cold weather plan, before somebody freezes to death. What can we do? What, are there some sort of process in, in, in concert with the RCAP whoever to, to try to help them, help these people? The bottom line is the town is full. The four or three echo buildings are full. So there's no place for them to go. Uh, if you build a place, uh, there was a lot of debate on that, what that building would look like. Would it have cement walls that you could hose down after the evening? Because there are some nefarious characters there who may, uh, may not want to be in a hotel. Uh, so the cold weather people concerns me a lot. And then at uh, February 7th, we met at uh, a local restaurant and 
the deputy mayor, uh, when Tony was there, myself and uh, Councilor Mario, and we met with uh, eight young uh, resident doctors. They are doctors now, and uh, one year for some this fall, the spring for the others. And they talked about the things that would attract them to Swan River. Were there some major things? Obviously, there were some. Uh, one was the airport, two was uh, maternity services, and three was the CT scan in, in priority. Did I miss? I think those were the three top ones. And uh, they certainly liked everything they saw. They liked the rates, which were very attractive to them relative to the rental fees they're paying. And they wanted to do more fly in, fly out. Then on February the 11th, I met with uh, Dr. Andani, who is part of the team that represents the medical clinic. Again, uh, Councilor Wintoni and myself, and we talked about the concerns they have at the uh, clinic. And the space potentials and the space issue was talked about at great length. And uh, they wanted to encourage again, which we have already. I think uh, Mr. Poole has sent a note to the G4 Reeves saying write a letter of support for uh, government to look at this. Uh, resident docs again, and their concerns are talked about at length. And uh, as nudging from his worship, uh, I've been squeezing the local doctors to give us a plan. What do they want? What size? Where do they want it? So before we can move forward, nudging government for $100 or a million dollars, we should know specifically what the doctors want. They have promised me to get uh, get that back to us sooner than later. And February the 12th, uh, Council Mario, uh, Council Wintoni, we've been busy. <coughs> we see each other often. And Chief uh, Fedorchuk, we went over the bylaw again at great length, massaged a little more, but that didn't show up. It was supposed to be mailed over, but it didn't get here. I didn't see it, so uh, I, I'm hoping that council would, uh, would appreciate uh, the subtle, they're very small, but again, I have a bit of a concern. We pay this very professional person to create bylaws. I'm not sure that it's council's role, and I don't know the answer, to go over every bylaw, every, every discussion paper that's produced by all the entities within. I think we should check them over, get a feedback from the people in charge, and uh, move on. Boy, it was, it's very time consuming. And I'm thinking that's about it. Well, I know PMH is here on the 28th of March, so they, they will be inviting, I think it's going to be 10.30 in the morning. Traditionally, they invite our council or interested members of that council, and they'll bring us updates on what's happening relative to healthcare. And I've asked them to put three more things on there. One is a CT scan. Uh, what are their thoughts about it? Two is space. What are their thoughts about it? And three, at the moment, we have a young person who has a contract with the Community Health Foundation. This, I'd like to see the contract sometimes so I can argue for it. And uh, at the moment, there's no placement for a physiotherapist in our community. So I've asked uh, PMH to let us know, how does that work? So we have a person once coming in the past. We have two full-time physiotherapists working with adults. At the moment, we have none working with adults in PMH. And one of the nicest uh, physiotherapy spaces in the province. Thank you. Where is that meeting? So, where is that? 28th. It appears to be at 10.30 in the morning in the hospital. It'll be hospital. in a large boardroom. Okay, one more question. When's the next interagency meeting? Pardon me? When is the next interagency meeting? Uh, tomorrow. I think I, we talked about that earlier, Councillor. And uh, what I had written down for tomorrow for you was uh, Phil uh, PMH 2 p.m. Chamber of Commerce Building, the 20th. I would encourage you to phone the chair where it is and uh, confirm that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys uh, sort out your calendars uh, later on. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gray. I don't even know where to start. There was a letter to the editor about CAO. When was that? In today's paper, I uh, read apparently. Yeah. I've Daniels. It just in regards to All of them. CAO searches oh. and lack of CAO. Was it editorial or something? Yeah, lack of all. Yes, yeah. editorial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something of that nature. Right. Um, as for reserve funding, I'm assuming what you mean is that people on social assistance no longer get social assistance if they move away from the First Nation. Because there are all kinds of funding that people get if, if they're First Nations members. 
uh, they get educational funding, or uh, med medical funding, there are all kinds of funding that people get. Uh, I don't know what that meant, and so. Where did I? Uh, but it's not. It's grossly inaccurate to say that First Nations don't fund their citizens um, if they move off the reserve. It's only that they they have limits on what they do fund. And unless they have, for instance, K-8 Tribal Council in Thompson has housing, and so they have that reserved for members who are members of KTC, so it's subsidized housing. Uh, but there are, and there, it would be difficult for First Nations in a non, to provide housing elsewhere um, in a non-subsidized way. So um, I could not agree, disagree, Councillor White, with you more that on the issue of um, review of policies, the stating policies, and in fact, most of what I wanted to talk about tonight was about that. Council has one role. It is to set policies. It is to review things and to act in governance. It is not to do hiring people. It is not to do um, individual expenditure approvals as much as you know, we might do that. Um, it is about big picture stuff. And, and the more we, there's an expression, I love expressions that I steal from people. The enemy of the good, of the, of the great is the good. So we do a bunch of good <coughs> things on the group. It stops us from being great, it stops us from breaking through because we compete with 200 towns in Manitoba and 2,000 towns across Western Canada. And if we continue to go on with, if we keep doing the same thing, we're going to end up Anybody can't project where we're going. And so the co-op, um, we own part of the responsibility for that. This council, and past councils particularly. I noticed you made a, 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 a lapsus lingua. Um, you said there is no town plan. And, and you said that. that. You just said that. And then you corrected yourself. Yeah, you did. Okay. Check the tape. Right there. And my point is that that in fact that is the problem. So one of the things I'm going to ask is can we get Terry to produce us financial statements that show the budget and actuals because that's something that I'm sort of missing. I, I was happy to get the other and, and, and I wasn't really worried because I knew we were coming to an audit. But going forward we should be reviewing the financial statements and approving a budget and then making sure that we're on budget and if we're not we're approving money. We should be approving the authority to hire positions. We should be approving position structures. We should be uh, reviewing and creating a conflict policy because there is a, con a conflict policy that came forward. It doesn't appear to be well understood. <coughs> we have to search for it. And, and moreover, it needs to be updated because it doesn't deal with all of the issues. We don't seem to have much as um, our auditors be, have faith in We don't seem to be exercising very good governance internal um, controls. So those are all things that we need to discuss at the next meeting. I'm, I'm hoping when I raise these things that they get put on the agenda because I've got this feeling that I say these things and I keep bitching about them. I'm sorry about the word. Um, I keep complaining about them. Um, that next meeting and the next meeting and the next meeting, but we never get to them because we actually have to have a time when we talk about this. Which brings me, well, we received a report from Roger just before he left. Are we going to talk about when we have our meetings? Because it seems to me that's a fundamental issue. We had everything just come online yesterday afternoon. I'm not being critical, it's just it's the way it is. And it's part of the problem of the, of the holiday session. Shouldn't we be? talking about when we have our meeting? Shouldn't we be talking about moving that away from Tuesdays to something else? I mean, I, I want to accommodate Jeremy too, but, but I mean, I think that's a big discussion, but we need to talk about that because Tuesdays are a brutal time to have council meetings. Not because I hate Tuesdays, but because um, <coughs> it interferes. We, we're interfered with Tuesdays would be a far better day. It's, it's impossible other than a, you know, floating all these like Remembrance Day, we wouldn't have much to say about that. Is it the Tuesday or the first and third Tuesday? Uh, I think it's Tuesdays. Yeah. Is it the first Tuesdays that created the problem? Well, first Tuesdays and second Tuesdays, uh, because uh, Remembrance Day, or yeah. uh, 
um, Thanksgiving. Um, just updates on some things that are going to come up in a minute. Um, we're expecting to get some kind of RFP shortly or um, information shortly from the pool as to those things which are critical. So in our budgeting process, we're going to be going ahead with some repairs um, that are critical. Did everybody read what Patty sent us today? Patty sent us an email that outlined the reply of at least one of the persons to our request for particulars. Okay, you should read it. Um, I think we should get our hands out of the sand and, ex and, and we should pursue the lawsuit potential. But we should, they're taking very seriously the fact that we didn't seem to do our job. That we, and, and worse, we didn't even investigate that before we started the process because that should be easy to answer, but it isn't. So that's the repairs piece is coming. The other is that um, in terms of the arena, we've asked for an RFP for the most basic repair. That is that we'll have that on the shelf available to go if something happens to the arena. But we have to have a long-term discussion we actually have to decide what we're doing. So let, let me give you a couple of pieces. <coughs> um, Lundar or somewhere, I just got it from somebody, um, just built an arena for like $7 million. Now it won't be the same as ours and we need maybe a little more, but it's not hugely different. They didn't spend millions of dollars on architects who put the building the wrong direction. They didn't spend money on people who put the wrong air exchange system in. They went ahead and just built a building and structure went around that. And they still had you know, two or three hundred thousand dollars in engineering fees. But we have a plan. We have a plan for it. Our plan is out by the high school for a new arena, if we need a new arena. But we need to have the discussion if we're going to have that. If we're not going to have it, that's fine. But we need to have the discussion. Similarly with things like the clinic, we actually have, have that in our plan. And unless we divert, that plan was passed by a council. That is the plan for the town of Swan River. So unless we're going to change that plan, unless somebody wants to raise it and we have a debate, it astounds me that we would deviate from the plan. The plan is we're going to build a health center out by the pool. That's the plan. Not, we're not if the Royal Bank pulls up, we're not, we're not taking the Royal Bank building over unless we want to change it. But the way we change that is by way of a resolution of council, not by individual decisions, in my view, the greatest respect. Which brings me to my last point. I'm sorry, Your Worship. I've lost it. Council should, I hope you said, could concern yourself with big picture stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree with that completely. But I think what's been happening with looking at some of the bylaws, we're looking at definitions, asking for explanations of definition. I find that a little tedious. Big picture, setting general guidelines, but if we say, we're going to change the plan, the plan has changed, obviously, because the, the wellness center was built out there, was a great plan, was all there. <coughs> the doctor, sometimes you have to change your plans, because the proponents, people in there, want something different. And well, they wanted the spot where it is. So the town might be wrong in some of their plans. Well, that's fine. But the way you deal with that is to actually change the plan, not to simply go off on a tangent. And, and that's the problem. Is It's that there is a process for having plans. There's a process for changing plans. And yet we don't follow it every, any time. Which brings, I know what the last point is. Skipped over. It's my recurring complaint. We need to schedule time for planning, for actual planning. Whether we do it on off Tuesdays or off whatever days, I don't care when we do it, but planning is a process that we need to start. I've now been here four months whining, complaining the whole time about when are we going to get to a plan. We haven't even started the session 
in, uh, in a more casual session. When I ask me, where would you start? And the first start step is gathering data, gathering information. We haven't even started that process. We'll be in our second year before we get to a plan. And that's unacceptable. It would, it's unacceptable. Anyway, that's my <laughs> Uh, as far as those planning sessions go, <coughs> Council and Tony and I both have spoke about them, and I and, and you know that if, if that's something that Council wants to do, other than some of the emails I received yesterday, then you know what, that's something that I think that we're completely in support. And we, can, we can move on to something like that. So next Tuesday, uh, I'm gone, but oh. the rest of Council can meet. You know, you don't necessarily need me here, so I'm going to be gone. And so if Council wants to start to. Uh, that process and, and hear what Councillor Wintoni has to say in, in, in his presentation, then go for it. So I would just like to see the agenda, if I could. So I think it's quite reasonable if one of our councils had any specific plan, idea, and wanted and thought it was important, they should drop a note to other members of council and say, hey guys, how does next Tuesday look? And we can have a planning meeting. Rather than wait for it to explode on its own right. or evolve on its own, drop a note to all the councillors and say, hey guys, I think having a planning meeting would be nice on a Tuesday because if we wait for it, it ain't going to happen. And, uh, and, and, I, and I think that also that you, 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 you can't just come with a whole bunch of things. You've got to focus on a few things because if you're, you're going uh, meeting for two or three or whatever, four hours, you're, you're going to have to make sure that you keep it as simple as possible because you may have some in-depth stuff that's talking about what Councilor Gray's talking about, some planning and, and, and going over some of the the, uh, the things that we need to talk about as council, or if, if it's something that Council Tony or Council Morrill wants to bring forward as well. So, <clears throat> I just so, check my email, Your Worship, and I'm assuming that thing that Patty said only went to the Red Commission. So for me to have read that would, well, would it be impossible because it's okay. not on my mail. So I feel a little guilty when I say I haven't read something. Then I realized I didn't get a sent it, so that would be a good reason for not having read it. <coughs> I don't have. It. And, I, and, and I, I, I didn't look at it. And, and I didn't receive it either, but, I didn't. but but anyway, that's fine. And I think that if, if you do see emails that, that the rest of the council needs to see, then and forward to them and just say, you, you, you guys and gals need to, to know what this is and <coughs> review it. At the same time, I'm going to remind everybody, please use your town emails and don't use personal emails and sending, especially to me, if you can, because mine's spamming all over the place and I'm getting information that I, I'd rather have on my on my town uh, email address, and I think that probably goes for most of us. <coughs> so, Councilor Gray, you were finished there. So as much as I can. <coughs> okay. So with me, um, I guess uh, other than what's already been spoken about, uh, Mr. Poole and I had a chance to go and drive out to the LP <coughs> plant there for the community liaison community meeting, which was interesting. It was my First one, I think that for Mr. Poole as well, we get to hear. Uh, it, it's, it's, I guess it's part of their organizational structure as far as us being a part of that. And I mean, all the, the Valley municipalities. So there's representation from all areas of the all municipalities in the in the Swan Valley, the G4. So they they basically touch down on their you know their their safe um, uh, work ethics and everything else and how well they're doing. As far as that goes, but they also talked about expansions that are coming up, Council Door, and we'll know more about that stuff. I don't retain all that information because it was interesting, but some of the other things that they have expanded, they can still do the OSB and, and the siding out there. They've had some really good success with, uh, and one of my questions was, you know, getting CN cars, and because that's a big concern. We talk about things down the road and, and, and making sure that we have our product moving. Um, they, they've had some huge, uh, they've seen a lot more cars in January and February than they've ever seen. So they're pretty happy about that. And, and if you look around, you know, Swan River and Kenville and some other areas where they've been stockpiling railroad ties, you know that they've been doing some upgrades. So that can only mean good things, at least for the time being, and getting LP moving the product. We all see that LP is, is a huge <coughs> economic factor as far as providing jobs and, and helping the economy of the whole Swan River Valley. But they, they have done some huge reinvestments in this plant and we have to be thankful for the management team and all the employees that we have out there. 
and I had even commented, commented that some of our good people from Swan River have left to go and help their other uh, plants and head office in Nashville, but also some of our local employees, including this guy sitting next to me, has been out helping them uh, expand <coughs> their operations in other parts of the country. So we've got some really good people working out there, and, and uh, we can give them all the support that we can. But something was interesting that we got out of that was they're experimenting on making fence boards and stuff like that. So <coughs> just I couldn't believe what they, they were showing us. But there's so much more going out there. But uh, I, if anybody wants to ask, just ask me or Councillor uh, DeLorean, because he can probably give more insight. <coughs> and actually, I wouldn't mind even actually taking a tour of that facility, because I did take it before they did the changeover. I'd like to see what the changeover says now. And I know that they're talking about more changes. So pretty interesting stuff. Um, Swan Valley Health Facility Foundation, usually this, I've met with this group now three times in the last month and a half, and, and we're meeting again tomorrow, so we're, we're, there's three new members out of the four, so we're starting to get kind of understanding how this whole process works, so it's been quite interesting, but on the doctor recruitment fund and its contributions, it's probably more important for, for this council to be aware of. <clears throat> and so far, that reserve, and if anybody doesn't understand what it is, then you, know, you can ask me now or later or whatever, but so far we've seen that fund grow to be nearly a, a, a million dollars. And uh, the G4 contributes annually $160,000. They have made some commitments to some doctors and some other people that they could recruit for different positions within the facilities that we have. And, uh, and so forth, but um, <coughs> there's not a lot of disbursements going on. And, and, and sometimes they say, well, you know what, buy some of the equipment for us because we'd rather have that than rather than the doctors themselves taking some of the dollars, and, and we have to be pretty grateful for that. But I still believe that <coughs> it's, it's growing and it's helping us, but at the same time, um, where do we want to go with this? And so um, I know that there has been some commitments or, or hoping some commitments for the CT scanner a little bit out of this fund and I think the doctors support that. Um, I don't know about the, the clinic and that's, there's still a bigger discussion about that and I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, <clears throat> I was going to say that we right now Mountain, this is, last year was Mountain's last year of commitment and so that means that they either have to decide if they're going to continue on with that commitment or they're, they're going to back off. And so that means the rest of the municipalities do have a commitment for this year. And so, so my thinking was that perhaps um, we consider that maybe we leave the fund at you know, that million dollars, maybe if all the other municipalities would agree that maybe we would perhaps back off this year. I know that the Dallas Swan River and our tax, you know, our situation that we have with the 2019 budget, that it would have, it would probably give us a little bit of uh, alleviation, I guess, if that's the word for that, and, and help us out, and perhaps maybe then we can go back to it in 2020 and look at it again. So uh, I guess my question would be, you know, the rest of the councils, is that something that I should speak to our other uh, municipalities about that, considering the fact that we do have sizable money is sitting in that, uh, in that account right now, and that uh, I think our con contribution ourselves is about $65,000, that maybe we can pull back and uh, can consider um, looking at that next year. Councilor I would fully support uh, almost fully support what you're saying. I would like to see us go back to the original amount, which I believe we, were, we had a five-year agreement to be at the 65,000. Um, go back to, I think it was 25,000. My concern is once you go down to zero, yeah. it's hard to ever go back. Okay. I'd like to see us go back down to where we came from. That still relieves some of the pressure. The fund, that million dollars isn't going anywhere in 2019. So, that's my only really concern is no, not just for our partners, but also for some of the other, other uh, even ourselves. 
once you get that line out of, out of uh, a, budget. a budget, it's hard to put it back. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Uh, I have empathy for what he stated there, but a million dollars in the healthcare world is not a lot of money, and it's sitting there. And it took eight years to get there, and as I recall, the CT scan, hypothetically, let's say, was purchased would be over a million bucks. If the building comes through, and I agree with you completely, it's not going to happen this year. Uh, that could be a million dollars. So the money sounds like a lot, but in the short term, thing, it's not going anywhere, and it's probably close to maximums. I could live with the second choice there. Personally. Okay. Councilman Tony. Um, my thoughts are I, I I don't like to deviate from reserves, especially knowing that a million dollars isn't isn't a lot of money. Um, I think that uh, that we should continue to contribute to that and whether or not it's a reduction or moving down to zero, I think it's very hard to get those back up. Um, over a projected longer period of time, so I would I would be inclined to stay where we are where where we are with that putting money into that project. Because in all essence, a million dollars is not very much money. Anybody else want to add in? I I guess we're not we're not uh, of one mind on this. From a resolution, uh, as I don't even know how you, uh, if we're not one mind on it, or if we don't have a position on it, how do you go and talk to our neighbors on it? Well, and that's the thing, you know, you have the discussion because I think that some of them already have been having the discussion. They've been waiting a little bit from us as well to hear what our position is on it. And, uh, you know, like if you're talking about uh, reserves, you know, like as far as the town and small river reserves go, then yeah, you know, you. We talk about the equipment reserve. We have a long-term plan for what that equipment reserve fund looks like and, and, and the contributions that have to go into it. We talk about this fund where we let it grow. And there was bigger plans as far as what we were going to be pulling out of that, but a lot of times the doctors have been uh, turning it down. So we're, we're now resorting to purchasing equipment and so forth. But, um, you know, I respect what you're saying, but uh, for me, I'm just thinking that we should consider what we're looking at this year, you know, as far as how the um, budget uh, implications are, and there's not going to be any sizable monies that are going to be coming out of the fund this year at all. The medical service team meet the March 6th, yes. theoretically would have representation from all the municipalities. Uh, I could certainly put that on the agenda, say, hey, you know, here's the dollar figure, what do you guys, should we continue with one option, should we discontinue it, another option, should we, should we reduce it back to a half? Let's see what they think of the Yeah, back I'll be the meeting with them tomorrow night too. So, okay. yeah. What's tomorrow? Uh, my health facilities foundation meeting. Pardon? Health facilities facilities foundation. So that will be all all the municipalities. Will it? They'll all be represented there. All one person from each one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Councilor Gray, do you want to? I I I. I'm I'm not I'm not understanding something. We. Our, we had committed to doing a certain thing because we thought that it was necessary to do. The circumstances haven't materially changed. Well, they have in the fact that the expenditures that we thought we would have for this money never materialized. Right, right. Absolutely. But but we have lots of available expenditures, um, and and <coughs> again. Same thing. It's it's. This would be easy to decide if we knew where we were headed, as opposed to just making ad hoc decisions. Uh, to me, I'm having a hard time figuring out why we would change course now. Particularly, I, I there are some short-term benefits. I agree in terms of making it easier for our books because we don't put as much in, so we save fifty thousand dollars here and a hundred thousand dollars there, and it, it would help us. I, I understand the logic of that. But I, I hate, and I've said any number of times, just sort of ad hoc decisions. I, I don't understand why we, because I think that if we make that decision, we may well regret it in the sense that uh, a year from now or two years from now, we're going to say, well, we need that money. Now we're going to have to go back to the well and do it. I, I think it's something that we plan to do. Let's just 
stay the course until we actually have a, a plan change. Or if you want to bring forward as a resolution to change the plan, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly willing to deal with that. And, and someone can say, here's the reasons we should change the plan. Councilor I, I I concede the point on going back to the well. Once you once you give them the money back, it's hard to go back and say, you know, we're going to raise your taxes for fifty thousand dollars more. So having said that. I, I, if we do drop this, I'd rather redirect that. We have we have countless options as far as debt to pay off. Redirect that for one or two years, and if we do need it, if, if, a, if a more concrete plan for expenditures doesn't materialize, it can be re redirected back. Nothing wrong with putting extra payments on debt. I, 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 that that would be my because I, I, that's a valid concern. Is it's hard to to say you know what we need fifty thousand more dollars for doctor recruitment two years from now. But if we're already taxing for it, let's pay down some of our debt. Uh, originally, the number one recruiting tool, I believe, was the, the primary care clinic itself as a collaborative workplace. Number two now, in my mind, is a CT scan. For us to get surgeons or anesthetists to work and do the, the practice their skills that they're trained on, they want the CT scan. And from an economic perspective, we get to do the math, hundreds of thousands of dollars brought in by those professionals moving into and establishing themselves are I mean, far more money we accrued by having them here than not. That, yeah, that's why we're not saying we're not going to go ahead with the CT scan plan. I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm leading more to the status quo. Mr. Morio. Councilor Morio, did you want to make any comments or are you behind on this one? I think <coughs> part of the conversation is that does it's, watch it on the video. <laughs> and I think I think there'll be furthermore discussion about it. You know, just about the contribution to the doctor recruitment fund. So, um, so, so yeah. So, so with that, because um, it's a doctor recruitment and retention fund. So, right. So, if, if there's concern there that it's just a piggy bank that's growing, um, maybe we need to look at something like part of the retention aspects, like the CT scan or whatever and stuff like that. That's, Expenses, but it's a it's a big discussion that needs to involve all parties and uh, get a, a, a consensus on the direction that we need to go. Right. To the degree, like we're already taxing for that money and stuff like that, it's earmarked for that. But to reduce it and then go back and say we want to bring it back back to the well, like you guys have mentioned, uh, it would be a lot more difficult. Than Versus it's there already versus just maintaining it. So, for me, uh, some of the I think the some of the people out there might look and say, you have a, you're sitting on a million dollar fund that you have not, you know, taken more than X amount of dollars out of it, like and you're taxing the ratepayer for it, you know. So, I think that you're right. There's a, a bigger discussion about this and, and <coughs> far more, and, and I think that we should end on a note there and we should move on because uh, we're getting late. So. Anyway, uh, Mr. Poole, did you want to add anything to that at all? Um, not specifically to that conversation, but I guess in my report, just to update council, uh, I have contacted the well control building contractor to <coughs> so he can start outlining the processes for me when we start. No surprises. Uh, I apologize to the, the rec committee for not having the RFP complete yet. Whatever, but it will be. It will get done ASAP. I've contacted our lawyer regarding the CBA and some mistakes that I have found. So him and the union rep have agreed uh, on the changes, and hopefully within days we should be getting the uh, the agreement for signing. And I'm talking <coughs> to the Lions and the, obviously the companies that are proposing for the. Recycle slash waste residential commercial collection and processing. Uh, Darren is also doing uh, heading that up, doing a lot of work there. Uh, obviously, the, the clerk position, reviewing resumes. Me and Terry will be doing uh, uh, the interviews. So the personnel committee will be updated. Uh, and yeah, working on budget, capital, the airport, trying to. Uh, be creative with the managers to see where we're at and you guys will be updated as we go along. Uh, and I guess I 
just on a note, I'd love to be the one that proposes all these, all the plans, because I'm, I'm definitely on the same page when it comes to the long-term plans, and, and if, if we have to find our own road to get there, so be it, and I would, I would love to be the one proposing that as soon as I just find some time, but I'm on board, and uh, I'm willing to work with whatever committee council decides to make that happen. <coughs> Resolved that the minutes from the December 8th, 2018, January 17th, and February the 7th, 2019, Recreation Committee meetings be received. Just uh, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Resolved that the 2019 Platte District budget be received and accepted. Moved by Councillor <laughs> Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? I've got a question. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. discussion. Sorry. Um, I guess Councillor Dory, you sit on that board. Yes. Um, I'm cool with all the entire budget. I just question as to why the town's uh, portion is going up and then the other municipalities are going down. How, how our portion is, is decided is they take a five-year rolling average of the permitting activity that's conducted through the planning district. So if there's more activity in your municipality, it goes up. So there's that. Uh, and that this year also captures an error that was made in 2017, um, where three of the municipalities underpaid, and we were one of the three, and I believe it was Minnetonas Bozeman overpaid. And it, 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 so there's a roughly about a two hundred dollars of the I think of the six hundred dollar increase um, is due to that error from 2017, and other than that, it's the fluctuation in and historically we see our average going up as far as activity. Okay, so you have a for that. Yes. Okay. No. And it's on a five-year rolling average, so one particular spike in a year doesn't affect you. Okay. Perfect. Can I just ask discussion? Council Gray. Sorry. Can I just ask what posted min fee is? Posted min fee is the fee we pay to the conservation district for administering the planning district. It's put out to tender every about three or four years. To uh, it used to be only to municipalities, and then we opened it up to basically anybody that wanted to put in submit a bid for it. And uh, conservation district was the most bid. And what does DO wages and DO? Uh, what's DO mean? Uh, the district officer or a development officer. Development officer. Uh, that's his uh, wages for uh, administering the policy of the planning district as far as permitting, going and doing site inspections, uh, you know, doing. Who's the development officer? Uh, around the wiki. Oh, I see. Okay, so he has a separate contract. Yes. From ours. Yes. Okay. That's it. I guess just on that note, the uh, expiration on the administration fees is 20, 20, 2020. I, 20, at the end of this year, it's done, right? Yeah, I'm under that impression. Yes. It's the under 31st of the 19th year. Yeah, so we'll be going up to tender this summer. Okay. For the discussion, <coughs> all in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> Resolve that CAL signed the agreement dated February 20, 2019, for Leilai to perform the municipal office cleaning work. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. You see the uh, RFP and the decision paper. Discussion? All why, are we, why are we, why, didn't we change our permits? Are we, are we done procurement yet? We are not. No, we all have public meeting with all the contractors. Okay, that's why. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Uh, we get that one already. Okay, 9.1. <coughs> Result the town of Swan six monthly passes, cost 200, 372 for the pool to the Swan Valley School Division. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Go ahead, Councilor. Councilor. At our committee, we had referred this to uh, RISE, actually. We had a good discussion on, on how this fit in, and it was actually 
kicked over to Rise, and I believe they were going to deal with it. So I'm not so sure why. Not shared with the CEO then. I would assume that uh, I was I was at the meeting. Oh yeah. But I thought we were going to decide on these to, to let give these people an answer because we may not be ready. Well, rise is meeting Thursday. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 if not rise, then the doctor recruitment because it's it's teacher recruitment <coughs> is the point is that okay so philosophically we. Again, there's been no good argument advanced for why we would change the donations policy, which is we don't donate. That's not the way we do business. We charge for stuff, we fund stuff, but we don't donate. And so we're not donating, and besides which nobody thought donating one pass was that helpful anyway. But um, and if RISE doesn't do it, maybe we can talk about it. But our view was that we should be passing this off and maybe funding people to do things, but let somebody else deal with this, not rather than us having to deal with it. That was what we thought, whether it was RISE or or maybe we need to expand doctor recruitment to include bigger recruitment. And that's the kind of thing where if somebody's coming here, let, let's let's use instead of teachers for six weeks, let's see, let's assume we had an intern some interns were coming. They're coming. Why wouldn't we say to them, here, we're going to give you some pool passes so that if you want it, you feel good about being in Swan River. I mean, it costs us virtually nothing, and that, that group can pay for it. It gives us revenue, but that's not really the point. The point is that that the appropriate person, because we're, we're not giving a donation to those individuals, what we're doing is we're spending money for recruitment. Either it is recruitment or it isn't recruitment. Somebody else should decide that, not us. Okay. Great idea. That was the philosophy. Okay, fair enough. <coughs> so then I think... So I guess we what, what we need, uh, Mr. Poole, is if you can send or get uh, Patty to send over to uh, myself, I've been waiting for that, was the cost of the monthly memberships and the dollar amount that we would need to present at the RISE board, sure. uh, which I didn't, didn't receive that as of yet. And if I have, I apologize. It's in that resolution, I think it's $200. $372, I believe. Is that what it is? So that's... So so that request, if we can just have it formally sent to yep. Rise or myself, one or the other. I would really take a bite out of the million dollars we had over six of them about. <coughs> three hundred dollars, yes. We need up three hundred dollars at a time. So I'm assuming then that we're passing on nine one and nine two. Well, okay. So nine two is a little different. Okay. And the reason is because apparently we've had a sort of an understanding with them because they do stuff for us. But we give them stuff, and okay. so this is what the recommendation is. Our policy is no donations, and as of September 1st, 2019, we're going to send a letter to everybody like the Lions and so on. As of September the 1st, 2019, don't bother <coughs> coming and asking us for a donation. It's not coming to the committee. It's not coming to council. Management are going to say the town doesn't have donations for this kind of stuff. And, and so the Lions Club says, well, we give you money for things. If they want to work an agreement where they give us money and in return we'll give them something as an agreement, that's fine. But how do we say no to the Elks or the Kinsmen or anybody else if we give it to the Lions? And because everybody does good stuff. And so that, that's the, the actual proposal for that is that we um, let everybody know, all the service clubs, everybody, that we're not donating to anybody as of September the 1st. Uh, September the 1st was the date we chose, wasn't it, Councilor? Mm -hmm. So that's the actual resolution. I don't know if we need a resolution. So what do we do prior to September 1st? How we sent to council. Take care of it. So we just will say no. If it's, the, if, it's the, if it's somebody who's been getting regular stuff, let them have it till September the 1st. As of September the 1st. Because that would be against their policy. Yes. So we we, we, <coughs> have so we should pass this resolution. Yeah. Oh, pass okay. or defeat it, one or the other. Okay. Well, I'll move acceptance of it for now. So resolve that the town of Swanner donate the use of ten tables and fifty chairs, cost of eighty five dollars plus tax, to the Swan River Lions Club. Moved right. by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Uh, Discussion. The letter go. All in favor? Sorry. It's carried. Did the letter go to them. Who got? To the Lions. Just, not just them, to everybody. So. Oh, no, yeah, no. 
don't bother to learn. Whereas, whereas Valley Alliance Recycling Incorporated provides recycling, collection, and processing services to the town of Swan River, and whereas Valley Alliance Recycling Incorporated has incurred a deficit in the amount of $68,670.95 for the 2018 year due to large decrease in quality prices, particularly in the cardboard, large increase of mixed material fees, increased cost of transportation of finished product, and whereas the town of Swan River portion of total recycling collected and processed equals 81.6%, therefore be it resolved that the town of Swan River cover the 2018 deficit incurred by the Valley Lines Recycling Incorporated the amount of fifty-five thousand six hundred and twenty-nine and ninety-five cents. Moved by. <coughs> Do I have a mover? Movers, Councillor Friesen. Second by. Well, I second is we can talk about it. it. And it opens up for discussion. Councillor White. Uh, last we talked about this, I, I thought we were. Uh, maybe it's happened that we're going to ask the Alliance Club to come in and meet with the member of the committee mm -hmm. to uh, bring us up to date on that. Has that happened? No. Okay. Councilor <coughs> Moria. Um, so to my knowledge, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Poole, um, there is no formal contract with the Lions to specify who funds their deficits and whatnot regarding recycling? That's correct. So, Discussion. Does anybody else it'd be easier to say no, but we're probably going to come with hat in hand to the lines sometime, whether it be for a CT scanner, whether it be for. I just don't think the meeting should occur with the recycling committee and the lines club to explain the specifics that I don't pretend to understand. They, they fell short. I don't. Or sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I guess just to, I don't know, what information, like I know one of the questions at the last meeting was where are, where is our expense? And it is in the material process. It's 194000 out of the 228000 uh, <coughs> in their profit and loss sheet. But uh, I guess what, what, other, what other questions do, do we have? Uh, do they have any proposed solutions to this not happening again next year? Are they going to pretend they won't be doing it next year? <laughs> As I'm starting to say, perhaps there are solutions that they could share with us that make it easier to accept this year. Say, this is what's happened this year. Perhaps next year there's a solution that this won't happen again. I don't know, but I haven't heard their side. I worry that. Oh, sorry, Councillor Gray was ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Just don't forget it will be forever. Okay. <laughs> I worry that if we don't make a decision to approve this, that they could say tomorrow we're done, we're not picking up recycling. And then what do we do in the meantime until we procure somebody, somebody new? We don't have recycling. We don't have recycling. Councilor Gray. How much money do we receive from the provincial government for recycling? It was around 74000 from MMSM and 28000 from ours. 26000 and, and is that included in the 197000 we paid? No. So we, we have another $97,000 or $100,000 in our revenues that we don't share with and we do share with 28% of that goes to because the the, the agreements with the, the RMs is they pay for a percentage of our expenses, therefore the revenues of recycling we share with them as well. No, I'm 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 not being unclear. Where do you, okay, so from their financial statement, I, again one of them out how it just came to me. The 228678 is monies that is, are paid by somebody to them yeah. for um, 
the material. Is that right? That is, that's the expenses to the municipalities. Money paid by the municipalities to the to the lines for providing the service. Okay. And um, we get money from the provincial government over and above that money. We get we get all of the weights from the processed material, right? So we, we submit that to the the initiatives, the MMSM. And right. RARs, and we get according to those weights, we get money back. So, the I guess on the the two hundred twenty eight thousand is is the total amount expensed. Uh, all the municipalities expend expenditures. So somewhere somewhere in our financial statements would be one hundred ninety seven thousand dollars. That's right. As a, as an expense. Yes, one hundred ninety four. Okay. That's what I understood initially, but we thought that was different somehow. So we do need to have a meeting, as Councillor Wade has said. There was another question I had. Um, we have no control over what they have for payroll? No. Do we have a written agreement with them? No. And have they ever lost money before? Yes. And what happened when we lost money before? When we have more money. Then. What's our argument for not giving them more money? I mean, I mean, let's let's go through that. Our agreement with them is that they'll do the recycling and we'll pay them, right? We don't say how much we're going to pay them, other than we give them this amount of money. And when they've lost money in the past, we've paid them. Am I missing something? No, that's so that's correct. Firstly, who the who thought of that? Plan. And secondly, then we're aren't we kind of toothless bulldogs? Aren't we? Aren't, like I mean, we can growl all we want, but at the end of the day, <coughs> we've agreed effectively by our past behavior to pay the cost of operations, haven't we? Or am I again? I, I may be missing something, but I, I'm having a hard time figuring out how we avoid civil liability. I guess this would be a perfect place to put that excess uh, money we collect for <laughs> recruitment for at least one year. Yeah. And, and it, it actually would work out perfectly because all four municipalities have some culpability in this. If all of us decided to, uh, and it, you know, it wouldn't even be all the doctors, we, we collect $160,000 for doctor recruitment. This would be, uh, what did they ask you for, 60, $68,600, so $70,000. So we'd still be putting ninety thousand dollars into doctor recruitment. The Lions would be happy. We'd have a new contractor. They they could bid under the new rules. Right. So I yeah. I think that that would be a it's a solution. It's a solution. It's it's not bad. Uh, I guess you try and explain where we are, and it's it's not perfect, clearly, but. Uh, it's it's tough when you know we, I remember when we did try and get an agreement with the Lions and we weren't happy with some services so we would we would try and rent our truck get expenses out of them but we found that their expenses grew by that exact amount and we were it was clear the more money we tried to get out of them the more we were subsidizing them. <coughs> Further discussion. <coughs> well, just in terms of what we're going to pay for. They do have a twelve thousand dollar administration fee in their expenses. I'm not sure we should be funding a twelve thousand dollar administration fee. So I guess then, based on that, if do we want again, we can table this, and then we can get hopefully get that committee to meet and maybe express some of those um, views, and and I think that we kind of have an idea of. You know, we have some responsibility here as far as to pay what our share is, but then the questions on the administration costs and stuff like that, maybe that has to be ironed out first before we go in and dive in to say exactly what the number is going to be. Councillor Delorier. I have no problem meeting with them, but perhaps it should be more than just the committee because there's there's obviously some, lots of concern around this yeah, table. Fair enough. Um, and I, I guess... 
I would I would like to pursue further redirecting some of the doctor recruitment money towards us if the you know the nine point nine percent increase that administration showed us didn't even include this. That's We'd right. be well over the ten percent if if we have to account for this. So the money's gotta come from somewhere. We can't just tell Terry in one breath to uh, to you you know tighten the belt, meanwhile add uh, half a mil's worth of expenses on to them. So I I would definitely I, I know you're meeting with you I, I, if, if I could ask, if you could run that by your counterparts on uh, the foundation, see if you get some buy because the other municipalities may not know of this situation, and they, you know, we have fifty-five thousand dollars worth of the uh, worth of the seventy thousand, but the other uh, the other money has to come from from them. Well, if that's the wish of council, then I can certainly do that, Council Moria. So I guess we can. We have this meeting with them. We can bridge the discussion with them that if we are looking at subsidizing their shortfall and stuff like that, um, that we can have the discussion that, as Councilor Dory says, <coughs> kind of hard to refuse them and then go with hat in hand to ask for funds to help fund a CT scanner. This might be a good bridge with those funds um, of the recruitment. Is to, Look after this, but then come to an agreement as a potential funding arrangement with them on a major medical project for it. Since <coughs> dollars to expend or to cover off their shortfall is coming out of already predetermined medical dollars, so um, as a as a compromise and something like that. Okay. Who's so, do I have the uh, mover, uh, the uh, councilor Freeze, and the seconder, councilor Gillery? Table? Yep. Yeah. Uh, who's going to get in touch with the Lions to make arrangements? Um, can you do that? I can do that. Okay. And yeah. then just let the rest of the council know what can be uh, arranged. Again, I don't have to be here. The sooner you get this done, the better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on. 10.1. <coughs> be resolved that the accounts is hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number 23899 to number 23983 for a total of $267, $622.20. Payroll checks, account checks number 4390 to number 4396 for a total of $99,113.10. And payroll accounts check number 4397 to number 4404 for a total of $97,019.02. Discussion. Questions, Councilor Memorial. Um, just for clarification, um, Mr. Poole, uh, check number two three nine two five to maximum truck and trailer for would that be the parts for the garbage trucks. Garbage trucks. <coughs> questions, Councilor Gray. Um, what century in that? That is uh, Ron Malinke's contract. Okay, I must ask that every time. <laughs> Why did we have 30, just a minute, where is it here? Oh, in the wrong place, naturally. Let me go to the yeah. expenditures. <coughs> $30,507. Now, I know we have the lights on pretty late some nights, but that seems like a high hydro bill to me. Including all our facilities. I can compare it to, to just, years past just to see where we're at, but. Uh, Is that our usual hydro bill? I couldn't answer that, but uh, okay. I, I can pull those records. Can you? Because that's strange, quite candidly, and I'd like to know why we're spending that much hydro. Because there have got to be ways of us reducing that cost if we're spending 
$150,000 a year on hydro. Um, the second is, can you, for next meeting, pull the totals for 2018 and then 2019 to date for each of the law firms that we pay for? Because I'm thinking that this lawsuit has to have cost us, last time I told it, $65,000 or something like that. And I think I asked for this once before. I've done it. I just didn't give it to you. Okay. Terry has given that to me. Perfect. I just haven't passed that on. I don't know. And the other one was, of course, for the number. Because we have to make this as much. The same then for it comes to various consulting and engineering firms. Because we seem to be paying a lot to consulting and engineering firms, and we seem to be not going very far forward. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion, uh, Carlos Memorial. One last one, Mr. Poole. Um, the check 23932 to Cook Brothers. Is that for two passes of snow clearing uh, from Main Street and 4th Street? Thirteen thousand. Yeah. No, that was the one where they had to center plow. So it's uh, whenever, whenever uh, that much snow falls, uh, he couldn't do just the parking lanes. There was too much, so he had to put it in the center plow. So that's that's the increase. So so we put the pile in the it wasn't highways at center plow. It was us. It was Cook Brothers. For the discussion, do we publish our, our checks? Do we publish them? No. As far as this list right here goes? Well, they're part of the public record, and anybody, if they want to see the, they're on the agenda. agenda. If anything on the agenda is part of the public record, we don't publish them in the paper, but. Are they on our website or have they done? Um, probably not on the website, no. No, they don't go on the website. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Carry. <clears throat> okay, bylaws. Be resolved that bylaw 2, 2019, that's special service solid waste collection bylaw, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. I guess I just, I just want to make a comment to Derek and your staff, especially Darren. I know. Oh, I, I know from experience a lot of work goes into this particular bylaw. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So thank you very much for all the work that went in once again to it. Pass it on. Councilor uh, Morio, you were next? No. no. Councilor uh, I agree completely. Well, if you put one more line in there, 2018 it was this, 2019 it's that, they would have seen the four dollars. That wouldn't happen to me. We've got that note already. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. <coughs> Councilor Gray. Just for next year, since the plan is to go to 100%, when are we going to do that? Uh, we, we could have done it this year. The, the reason being uh, is to keep the increase at 2.5%. And also, if it is 100, uh, I guess this one isn't so much of a big deal, but if we expend uh, less than what we say we're going to, we have to give that money back. So that would be an administrative cost. So we did keep it down. It's at, we're at 96.2 percent, but uh, according to the municipal law, if we are under what we say we're going to expend, right. we would have to get it back. So we did keep it low is a good idea to okay. avoid that work. <clears throat> For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 11.2, resolve that the bylaw 12, 2018, the Fire Protection Emergency Services bylaw be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion. Councillor White. Did the updates that we had the other day get on here? Um, they showed up on the agenda today, <coughs> I see. Today. So uh, It could have been before, but when I looked this afternoon, it uh, was there, so I don't know. From the time you, um, I know Chief Fedorchuk was to bring you the posting thing on Friday, but the agenda, nothing got posted until yeah. late yesterday and it wasn't there. And then when I looked today at noon, it was there. So. That is 100% my fault on the agenda so. and the attachment for this particular. Yeah, so, so that being said, um, following our procedure, um, I don't know if Council's had sufficient time to review. Uh, our suggested changes or um, to formulate questions and other suggestions. Um, I, 
I'm good with moving it forward or tabling it till the next meeting for one item. Um, people to go. But, uh, Take it the highlighted things are the changes from the existing bylaw? Uh, from what I understand, um, our, the yellow highlights is what was proposed in the first reading. The green is what the committee and the uh, Chief of Orchard discussed in, uh, for second reading for drafts that were information and concerns that were brought forward or what we talked about with definitions, the ambiguous um, things like others and charges with uh, and fines with no set values and things like that. So we corrected all what we are aware that was brought forward. Um, there are set fines now? Because I looked through I couldn't see it. Yeah, they're right at the, the end in the fine chart. It's very thorough. So, um, sorry, you're not done yet? No. Nope. Um, I'm okay with the, the way chair, it is. The chair? You're not the chair, are you? No. Okay, so, <laughs> so let the chair do. we should yeah. let the chair speak on, on I'm okay with the way it is. <coughs> it's up to the team, but they may not be ready. Okay. I've seen it. And further to the Councilor uh, Wintoni. I'm on that committee as well, and I we spent a lot of time on it. Um, I'm not saying that it, we miss, we may have missed anything. I, I, I can say that we did our due diligence on preparing it and coming up with the second reading, I'm confident that um, that it's it's good for the second reading. Okay. This, uh, for the discussion, all in favor? Oh, 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 oh. Councilor oh. Gray. Um, okay. Section, if you can turn to um, paragraph 80. What page? Paragraph 80. Page 29. It says pages on mine does anyway. That would be page 29. Thank you. Um, everyone who commits an offense under section 99. Where is section 99? Or section 98? What am I missing? Yeah, it ends at section uh, 87. That's the first question. Right, I think so that, maybe was, don't have that was one that was brought up that he was supposed to change, and we were told that that would happen. Councillor Gray, you have another question? I do. Um, I understand the reason for um, number 45. It makes some sense because it makes reference to, to paragraph 52 and then paragraph 53. Right? So I can understand um, how that works. What I'm trying to figure out is why we have added um, Paragraph 49, because we've defined fire drive in the outdoors to include all the things in section 45. And so I'm trying to figure out why that is necessary. Secondly, um, I don't know, you, it's page 19. I don't know if there's a page number, oh, there's a page number at the bottom, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I do it for me here, and so I can get to for me to see. So uh, why is that necessary? So why was number 49 added is the question. Yeah, why is it necessary? <clears throat> okay, 46 that. seems, or 45 seems to cover it. So uh, was 49, this is something new or, or what? That was yeah, that's what they say. Okay, so committee. <laughs> the same committee. There, there may be a purpose. purpose. That, that was what I raised. Those were the two things I raised before. Could it be that 
Section 53 states that no permit shall be required to light, ignite, or start, etc. Right. But 40. But, but my point is exactly that. In one clause, we're saying you can do it as long as you comply with reasonable rules to control its spread. In another clause, we say you can't do it <laughs> at, all. Except, uh, at all unless you get an occasional permit from the fire chief. And I, I have serious problems with that. Is it the wording that says offense, so that, that, that it can be a finable offense? That no, because the failure to, be, firstly, um, the Summer Conviction Act actually provides for that and says if you're required not to do something, <coughs> like that, don't do it or do it, then it's an offense. So it doesn't matter. You don't need to say it's going to be an offense. It's an offense by definition. But although I actually prefer sections that have penalty sections, which are better defined than the ones in here. But that aside, I'm a defense counsel. I'd be just as happy to leave it vague because <laughs> I think I can find a truck through it. One of them is um, to apply to private, and one is to the public. And uh, well, how does it, where does it say that? So forty nine should be applying to the public. There's words missing there. So we'll have to take that back. So perhaps it's, yeah, it's not ready for prime time. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, I thought that we addressed that that concern as well, and I thought that 49 was supposed to be referenced in the... In 53 as well. And into the, um, the public, <coughs> burning the public special permit. So we, we don't actually want somebody lighting a fire in the, on the open grounds of Legion Park or in the cemetery or... Right. Basically, oh, anywhere oh. in town limits, it's illegal to light a fire unless you have the special conditions permit. Well, except on your own property. Uh, uh, yeah, like on public properties, and that's so. But on your own property, yeah. you have to have it in an enclosed. You have to meet the requirements. That's correct. Right, through the building, which is fine. Off, I mean, so. we, again, we're in a town. I, I think the idea of having wide open <laughs> fires is a bad idea. So I'm not against that. So, yeah. so there, there's still some cleaning up yeah. in here to be done, and uh, I think that maybe it, it's possibly a good idea either, uh, more than likely, to table this, and uh, I don't recall who the mover and the seconder were. I believe yeah, it might have been Councillor Morio. Uh, Morio. <clears throat> so we should probably table it. Let them clean it up, go back to the chief and sit down and, and make sure you you look at all the highlights and read it over again, and, and uh, we did that with a magnifying glass. Go. And uh, the, the well, chair has made reference to those particulars to have 45 yes. and uh, 50, 45 and 49. So, Why Councilor, they say the same thing. Councilor, well, they, don't, they don't necessarily. No, they one says you can have fires, you follow these rules, one says you can't have fires at all. No. So, Councillor White, I would uh, I'll do it. hope that your committee, uh, you being the chair, I'll do it. would have this cleaned up. I'll do it. Okay. Have Thank we you. demonstrated the reason council should review these? Okay. All right. So that's table. Moving on. Notice of motion. I don't see none there. Okay. So uh, resolved in pursuit to sections 152.3. The Municipal Act Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. For the following reasons that we I had on mind was legal issues and personnel. <laughs> no discussion for mover. mover. Sorry? Mm -hmm. mover. Yeah. Uh, mover is Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Memorial, sorry. Okay. All in favor? <clears throat> Carried.